Apocryphon, you can hear Mark when he comes in. Oh, there I see him now. There he is. There he is. Mark. Here what, you go. couldn't see me before? No, no, it was completely dark screen. How's it that going? That's so odd. Um, yeah, no, everything's good. I All I did was, in this case, I just switched to a different browser. Oh, wow. Maybe just the browser for whatever reason. Maybe. That's interesting. It well, happens. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Uh, just real quick, let me uh, say... Hammer on the Discord. Can you be watching the welcomes? Uh, so for when people are joining in, they need to be verified and and uh, as well give them the role. Thank you. That way, I could focus on the questions. So, Mark, Mark, welcome. did you uh, did you catch the intro, or you want me? I can. Read I, I heard the I heard the intro. It was it was perfect. Excellent. Appreciate you, brother. Welcome. Glad to have you, man. Yeah. So this is the asylum. A little Discord and the you know small little chunk of Discord. Uh, our own little server. Our, we have our little community here, and uh, you know, I'm just really trying to 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 reach out to you know people that, in one way or another, were influential in the movement, um, good or bad. However, people see it, it is what it is. Sure. But uh, you know, there's a lot of naysayers yeah. to the flat earth. Everybody, yeah, everybody. There's you're never gonna bat a thousand. You know what right. I mean? There's always going to be. I know people to this day, for example, I know guys that refuse to see the movie Titanic from what, 25, 30 years ago. Refuse to see it, even though it was it's one of the biggest money makers of all time. And right. I go, why? Why don't you want to see it? Because because I already know the ending. The ship sinks. It's stupid. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, yeah, but d don't you want to find out what, what all the hoopla was about? Right. It's like, nope. So, yeah, I'm not worried. Wow, yeah. So you think James Cameron's upset about them? <laughs> no, no, not, not, about them? not right. I, I, look, Let me tell you a quick story about that. I was in the theater back in the 90s when this thing ha happened, right? When this phenomena happened. Mm -hmm. And I was in a theater um, and there was a bunch, there were groups of teenage girls scattered around the theater. Right. You know, like groups of four and five. And when they got to the end, when DiCaprio died, Right, spoilers. Uh, they, <laughs> I'm sure we they're, all. They're all. You can you can hear them. They're, they're tearing up. Yeah, right? you know really? it's 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 sniffle city. And I remember when the house <laughs> when the movie was over and the house lights came up. There was a group of five five girls in front of me, and one of them was sobbing so uncontrollably they couldn't get her out of her seat. Wow. She could not. And I'm thinking. And all of a sudden I was going, "Yep, this thing's got legs. <laughs> this thing's not going away." And and plus yeah. you have the soundtrack to boot, which played in every hair salon for like two. Oh man, years that that straight. song was crazy. Oh yeah, that yeah. that's it made Celine Dion. I mean, he he basically you know it turns Celine Dion from just a Canadian singer into this Vegas superstar, right? To where they they built an entire hotel around her act, and right. uh, she played for years and years up until very recently. And I want you. Yeah, did she yeah. get like a hundred million for that? Oh yeah, so unlimited amounts. Of, basically, a contract for life. So right. you knew whatever happened to her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. When uh, when she quit just recently, uh, it had to have been serious because we're talking about a woman you couldn't pro off a, pry off the the stage with a crowbar. Right. So anyway, so a, the point the point that long way around is there. I know there's all there's always going to be people that uh, that that disagree with some of the stuff I, I do and, and are suspicious of me or whatever. It's like, I've heard it for eight years ever since, you know, Eric started spreading that stuff around. I was like, all right, it's fine. Right. If, you can, if you can find some proof of it, I'd love to see it. <laughs> but, but if, well, you, if you know what my master plan is after eight years of doing this, I uh, right. please, please clue me in, shoot me an email. <laughs> cause right. I, I, cause I've, I've gone off the rails. I'm, I've been under so deep cover that, I, I can't come out if I wanted to. <laughs> right. I hear you. Well, we'll get to that later, by the way. But I do have okay. quite a few questions. I want sure, to kind sure. of, you know, some kind of structure. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, Discord, any reason why you don't have it? And is it like preferences or you just don't really deal with Discord? I just don't deal with Discord. I just do all the straight up stuff. So, right. uh, I mean, I, I've called into Discord stuff like this before. I've, I've done little things where, where people brought me in 
mm-hmm. to Discord stuff, but for the most part, I just do podcasts, mainstream right. stuff like that. I don't get invited, believe it or not, to a lot of Discord. Wow. Well, so, I mean, hey. my 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 co-host, she actually runs one, Karen B. Uh, mm, yeah, from yeah. from our podcast Strange World, she actually runs a, a Discord, but like she is, she doesn't even invite me on that one. Right. So it's like it's it's fine. It's it's nothing personal. It's just <laughs> I I just don't get invited that often. Well, so well, I mean, well, I'm I'm glad to have you. I, I really well, am. Yeah. I, I, if anyone else has the Discord thing and they want to bring me in like this, where I don't have to install anything, I can just click a link. Easy. I'm all for it. Awesome. All right. Um. All right. So we'll get it started. Uh, when did it all start for you? What, how, what's your journey? What's your uh, the journey started in 2014, summer of 2014. Uh, I was bored out of my mind because I was older and I was there when the internet was new, when it was dial up and you could finish it. And so I had plenty, and I never got married or had kids. So I had plenty of time to look into plenty. just about every conspiracy you could think of. This part of the documentary was, was absolutely true. And mm. And I didn't want to look into flat earth because it's stupid. Why would I look into it? It's like, I'll, I'll look in, I'll look at everything else first. <laughs> and then right. maybe I'll come back to flat earth. Yeah. Sasquatch, and I did look at everything. Yeah. The what? I said Sasquatch, Bigfoot, and then flat oh, earth. Yeah. I, have a, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you could possibly think of. And some I liked, some I didn't. But I knew that I did not want to look at flat earth because it is the only obvious one that you don't have to look at because it's the only one it's debunked to us since we're children. Right. And so I, I spent a weekend, but I wasn't getting any younger. So it's like, uh, you know what? I'm a, I'm a lifelong gamer. So that, you know, there's, there's things in games you don't want to do, but it's like, ah, oh, if I'm going to get a hundred percent on whatever, I'm going to have to do it. So right. what yeah, was your I, game, I, by the way, what was your game? Well, back in the day, yeah. Uh, well, I played Warcraft for 16 years. Okay. That was that was a blast. Uh, yeah. Fallout 3 was a lot of fun. Uh, every, anything that Blizzard made, they said I was a game snob. Right. Starcraft. Absolutely. You like Starcraft? Oh, I love Starcraft. Yeah. Star, Starcraft was an, was an amazing game. Right. So amazingly. Favorites. Sorry. Go ahead. I said one of my favorites, uh, hands down. World of Warcraft and Starcraft oh. were one of, two of my favorites. Uh, are we talking Starcraft or Starcraft 2? Well, oh, they, well, hey now. So yeah. when the upgrades came up, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, again, anything that Blizzard did was gold in my opinion. In fact, I'm I'm uh, currently going through Diablo Four, just because uh, that's a game that should never have been made. Uh, they only made it because they pissed off everybody at BlizzCon so much, uh, <laughs> because they made uh, a mobile only Blizzard game, and all the hardcore tower guys like me were like, "What the hell are you doing?" Right. It's like we we built your little empire. Don't <laughs> don't you screw with us. And right. uh, so they made Diablo Four. So that was great. Um, I, I was anyway. a big gamer too. I was an avid gamer too. Uh, I I I actually literally in Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Two in the month of November. I forgot what year. I was number one in the world for like nice. that month. I I played a lot though. Like. I had serious hours on my, oh, you on have my to. profile. You but have yeah, to. but I was an avid gamer too though. But my, go ahead, my go only, ahead. So start? My, my only claim to fame in Warcraft was I did get a realm first. Uh which which I honestly accidentally just stumbled into it because uh-huh. I was I was kind of going for it which was uh uh realm first skinning on during uh, Pandaria mm-hmm. and I didn't think it was going to get it. So I didn't really try that hard. And it looked like I was, I was like, oh, I'm doing pretty well. And then yeah. I just, I, but I got stuck and I was like, spent like 15 minutes not doing anything. And then I just walked into this clearing. It's like, oh, look, there's some goats I can kill. And that was it. That's how I got it. Anyway, so I was bored out of my mind in 2014 and finally looked at, at Flat Earth and uh, thought, okay, well, I can shoot this thing down at a weekend. And that weekend turned into a couple weeks, which turned into a couple months, which turned into nine months. And yeah. off and on, I w- it was driving me insane because it's like, how is this thing so hard to figure out? Meaning, can you prove the globe without using NASA? Can you prove it in a court of law? Mm. And because NASA, everybody leans on it, right? And then right, you start right. looking at stuff where it's like, well, wait a minute. It's not like we, we, knew, we knew it was a globe once NASA got founded in 1958. 
we we knew for a long long time for centuries that it was a globe how did you know it like all the way up until um how did you know all the way up until the mid 40s like george orwell had this great quote you know the guy that wrote 1984 he goes he goes you walk around the street and he was talking about how people just believe science scientists no matter what no matter what they tell them if you're wearing a science jacket lab coat people believe you he goes he goes you ask anyone on the street this is in 1946 uh how they know the world's a globe they don't even they don't even hesitate what are you talking about we know it's a globe duh (laughs) it's it's right it's a it's a known thing and then you push them on it and you say really how do you know and then the the gears start grinding and they start getting upset because they they realize that it's not that they know it's they were told and there's a big difference there Absolutely. uh the, the line the line from the truman show which is we believe the world that is presented to us right and that is that is the case great when, movie, when a, sorry what great movie by the way sorry for cutting you off oh truman show yeah yeah it was, yeah. It was awesome awesome movie now 20 20 something years old um <laughs> right. so the and, and the the question is how did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946 when george wrote that it's like there was no nasa nasa wouldn't even be founded for another 10 years sputnik wouldn't be founded for another 10 years you know wouldn't wouldn't start up for another 10 years how did they know it's because they were told their right. their fathers and their fathers going back generation after generation so we we didn't have a chance when we got into it when when we were young you know nasa had already you know done their thing and then they never went back and so yeah i i after nine months i i just i i gave i gave up and i said that was in uh, february of 20 2015 I did the smartest move ever. I posted all my personal contact information online and I, I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues and I said, hey, I can't prove the globe anymore. Tell me where I went wrong. And and I was really hoping, really, really hoping that somebody would just call me up, some academic and say, all right, something simple and say, you know, you forgot to carry the two or it's, it's this and, and <laughs> that's it. You can, you can shut down your YouTube channel. And it was the exact opposite. People started calling me out of the, out of the woodwork, all sorts of subject matter experts, you know, uh, pilots and air traffic controllers and engineers and all branches of the military. And they, they all quiet, you know, some quiet, some not saying, yeah, dude, it's not that crazy. Here's why <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to add to your thing. And, and they started, and, and it just started piling up and piling up. It's like, wait, I was right. <laughs> It's like, are you kidding? That can't, this though. can't possibly be happening. And so, by the end of 2015, things really started ramping up. I mean, I had already done like coast to coast and and a whole bunch of podcasts, and I had my own little thing on Tuesdays, and and then there were certain celebrities started coming out and, and talking about it, and it just snowballed uh, to where yeah. other people were. Other people were jumping on. It's like you know, other people. There's like, well, if he can make stuff with with crappy video editing like that. I can definitely jump in and because right. I mean, I'd never really made a video in my life. <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was really, you know, I was using a, a like Microsoft uh, live movie maker, which I don't think is even supported by them anymore. And uh, so anyway, that, that, that was basically how Dating I, how I got here. <laughs> so, the what? Uh, do, do you, do you see yourself as a pioneer through all of it? Um, not necessarily a pioneer. I just, all I did was I pointed, I, I, I'm stealing from some of my own stuff back in the day. I just pointed at a, at a door over there that apparently nobody ever saw. It was, I wasn't a pioneer. I was like, it's like, does anyone notice that door <laughs> there? It's got, it's got right. lights on it and it's kind of weirdly shaped and, and people started going, walking through it. And as they, as people got into it, the more people got into flat earth, the more they started reinforcing, they were coming up with stuff that I never would have even dreamed of. The very first thing that people did, for example, so I never, I don't com- consider myself a, a, you know, the, the mayor of flat earth or the president or the leader or anything like that. I'm a recruiter. No question. Um, I am, I am by far and away the, the, the stuff you'll run into probably first when you get into this, uh, because it's easy to understand, you know, the, 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 there were other people that did it before me, but it was, if you know anything about academic books, they were like second year and third year books. I made the first year book, which right. is, which is like, you'll read this as a freshman and then you'll put it on the shelf and you'll probably just fondly remember it. It's like, Oh yeah, I, 
I hear that all the time. It's like, oh, Mark Sargent. Yeah, I was into him back back in the day. And now, right. But now I'm into <laughs> such and such. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The do, do you stay in contact with those that you started with, you know, way back then? Oh, always. Always. Um, I, the, in fact, the only people that kind of fell away, I mean, there was just very, very few. I could count them on one hand. Uh, one of them was Patricia from the documentary mm. uh, but that was that because was um questions how is patricia uh still doing i was gonna ask you oh she's she's hanging tough she she's she's there but she and it really surprised me because she's a little older than i am and she should know better or should have known better which is you do not feed the trolls if uh, you can um you know she was a big i mean come on she was a triple threat on the internet which was she was an attractive jewish woman uh, <laughs> right and oh, I'm sorry, four, four, and rich, <laughs> on top of it. Well, right? Aren't most? <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there's that. Well, no, in her <laughs> case, I mean, she was. What happened was her, her parents passed away when she was, I think, in her, I want to say, late forties. Mm. And when that happened, she, yeah, she came into quite a bit of money, and, wow. and, but, but the thing was, the, the, you do not feed the trolls. And right. what she started doing was she started sanitizing her YouTube channel, meaning you, she would go in and read every comment every day right. and then not, and not, not respond, but just burn, burn them out, you know, block, you know, you know, delete, block, delete, block, delete, block. And I'm going, right. Why well, you, you can't keep that up. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know, what happens when you have a hundred videos, what happens when you have 200 videos, you're going to keep doing this. And she goes, yeah, I go, you'll snap. You're gonna lose it eventually, and not only that, she even became a moderator on my channel, on uh, on on my YouTube channel because she didn't like the comments were people posting about her on my channel, and eventually it just got it was too much. Uh, yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah, she couldn't, she couldn't. Do, when the documentary came out, it put a big spotlight on her that she didn't want. Right. And I mean, she likes attention like anybody, but she doesn't like that sort of attention. Right. And uh, people called her out and they doxed her and, and you know, it, it, it wasn't good. And, and there were some <laughs> inner conflicts with, with other people in the community. But but other than that, everybody else. Yeah, we're, we're still in touch. Uh, the ones that are still around, you know, we lost a few during the pandemic. But yeah. uh, the most of the people that, that I, we, you know, the most of the conference people that I dealt with in 2015, I'm still dealing with rolling into the uh, 2023 conference in Vegas. So uh, you're going to be there? Oh, I'm opening it. Oh, OK, cool. Cool. That, yeah, that, that, yeah. Cool. I'll be the opening speaker, which means no one will remember it because everybody parties way too hard in Flat Earth and and I, as a public service announcement, we're, we're trying time. to roll. We're, yeah, we're trying to put this into the thing. I'm trying to remind people. It's like, look, this is different. We, we wanted to do Vegas back in 2020, but uh, because of the, the pandemic thing, we couldn't. But it's like the, the, the bars don't close in Vegas. So, <laughs> you know, drink yeah, responsibly. Walking around with the beer in the streets. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you you want to order, uh, you know, six more beers at three a.m. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. That's the place to be. I, yeah, that's a that's a terrible <laughs> idea for us. So anyway, the, right. that because of that, I am worried that when I when I do the thing, you know, people will be rolling in, you know, blurry eyed and say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, "It's our sergeant up there." All right. Pretty sure. Is that him? Yeah. Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sounds like anyway. some of our nights. <laughs> the what? Sounds like some of our Discord nights. We get really yeah. classic Discord and talk shit. I I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Um. You know, I was gonna ask you in, in regards to you know, uh, do you ever see like people on the streets that they recognize you and they run up to you and do you ever have that like feeling of like stardom, you know? Because these people are like, hey, um, I know that. Do they ever? I uh, did. I did when when. Well, when we do events, obviously, you know, when, when we do meetups and conferences and stuff like that, that always happens because that's the reason they're there. Right. Uh, right. But out and about the, when that ha the, the big thing was when it, when Netflix, um, bought it, when they, when they put it on their stream, uh, my, I knew we were, we were going into a next level thing because 
my email load doubled over a weekend. And I was already getting quite a few emails. And all of a sudden, it's like, right. <laughs> I go, did something happen? What happened? And it's like, oh, yeah, it went on Netflix. And, and people don't don't know. It's like, yeah, by that, it was already on Amazon Prime and iTunes and, and stuff like that. Right. But until if Netflix picks up your thing, it's still considered the, the cheapest bang for the buck when it comes to entertainment. And so, mm -hmm. and it, play, it went the full three-year contract, which was awesome. Uh, so, yeah. We had, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I was on a plane to a conference in, that was going to be in New Zealand. And I was flying down there. And I was flying business class because they, they, they said, if you're going to go to something that far away, you got to fly business class or you'll go insane. Or you might as well just get really, really drunk. <laughs> right. It's like, okay. So, and, and when, when you're in business class, actually the whole plane, but in business class, especially they just keep feeding you drinks and food to keep you satisfied, keep you comfortable. Right. Right. They just put you in like a food coma, food, alcohol coma. Right. My sister and was a flight attendant. Oh, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, so when he, when this guy was coming around and all this guy was doing was passing around bread, little pieces of bread with tongs. And there was all sorts of different kinds of bread, right? And he comes up to me, you know, by that time I was already full and half in the bag. And he goes, and he goes, he goes, um, so you want some bread? And I go, uh, nah, nah, I'm okay. And he looks at me again and he goes, you want some bread, don't you? Wow. Go, I'm looking, is this Mission Impossible? Is he going to hand me like a tape or something? Right. So I go, okay, I'll, I'll take some of those garlic rounds right right there at the bottom. He goes, yeah, you want those because they're flat and they're round. Wink, wink. Uh, right? so, <laughs> I'm so like he going, <laughs> yeah, he knew I was just like, get out of here. He's going, that, he's going, yeah, he, he could take these. I got to pass out more bread, right? And then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not see him for the freaking rest of the flight. But yeah, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, when when you, when it happens, it's cool. Um, yeah. You never expect it, you know, because you don't know where it's going to come from. So, right. it, but it wasn't as bad. It wasn't so bad that when I flew into places like LAX, you know, paparazzi never tracked me down or anything like that. But right. people came up. Yeah, people. You could tell when people were clocking you. You know, all you're like from across a room. You know, you can see their eyes following you. It's like okay. Yeah, like I, I see that guy on Netflix, <laughs> which yeah. we'll talk about in a little bit. I got some questions about Netflix. Um, but I did have this question um, as far as like origins of it. What's the number one proof that sealed the deal for you that it's flat and not a globe, even up till today? Because there's been a lot more discovery since when you started as far as arguing. Sure. Uh, the, the, what, sealed it, what sealed it for me wasn't what seals it for most people. Uh, for most people, I have to preface it with that. Most people, it's long distance photography, which I had nothing to do with. Um, I Nowhere in the clues d does it say that, hey, you should go down to the beach with an HD camera and just start shooting long distance stuff and see what happens, right? People just started calling me and writing me immediately after the clues came out. It's like, dude, I went down to the beach. It's like, why the hell are you at the beach? It's mm. like, because water lays perfectly flat. It's like, oh, right, <laughs> done. Right. And I mean, people were telling this. It's like, okay, that's fine. But that's not what, what got me into it because when I made the clues, you know, it, it wasn't that. You know, I, I, I didn't even look at that. What right. got me was the, um, the, the human nature greed thing that, uh, that we seem to just ignore, which right. was the, it was the Antarctic Treaty. And the Antarctic Treaty, you know, which was ratified in 1959, says that no corporation, no matter how much money, or liquid resources can go set up shop in Antarctica forever. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. Or, even though, you know, our, our Navy admitted an admiral in our Navy said, Oh yeah, that place is made out of money. There's a mountain range of coal and there's uranium and there's oil and gas and all sorts of fun stuff. And he was worried that there was going to be uh, conflicts down there. We're going to battle over resources. Yeah. And, that was that was the that's what sealed it for me because it's like wait a minute because I but this at that point I had studied it off in the conspiracy world I, I don't care what mainstream media says look this this world runs off greed and money and power that's what happens you know w wars wars are about money in fact there was a line from Vanilla Sky nine out of every ten problems in the world revolve around money oh yeah and yet 
Antarctica is beyond money. It's above money, meaning we're locking people out from guaranteed riches. And yeah. we're not even going to tell you why. That raises it's the red like, flag for sure, especially oh yeah, how that, that, money hungry that the world is. Yeah, and and I mean, and there were countries back then that really could have used them. I mean, the Soviet Union had suffered horribly during the uh, World War II, and Britain wasn't in great shape either. And the you know the, these are resources that even now we'd love to get. And here right. here's the thing: not only are we not allowed to get those resources, we're not allowed to talk about them. That's the big, right. that's the capper. You are not like if it's, this has happened so many times in the past when a corporation wants something, they will run full page ads or used to in the newspaper. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, but it's like, here's why it'd be great. It's propaganda. It's like, here's why it'd be great for us to do this thing. And those same companies aren't allowed to talk about Antarctica. And I totally got that. I, I put myself in the other people's shoes. It's like, oh yeah, that is an agency thing all the way where they go to the head of these companies and they say, Okay, so you're gonna want to go down there. Yeah, you're not going down there but for for national security reasons. If you even think about it, you're gonna be getting phone calls from us. You don't want us coming back here. And uh, and and when you retire or or you decide to to quit eventually, whoever comes in behind you, yeah, hand them this card. Tell them to call us. And that's right. it. And and I got it. I totally understood it. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, that's it. Antarctica is, is the big key. And uh, yeah. the more I stared at Antarctica, the the more it made sense. It's it's brilliant. Everything they did to lock that place down was just screamed uh, organizational, you know, um, deterrence. Right, right. No, no doubt. I was, uh, another question I had for you. Um, the the Flat Earth Society, who started that? Yeah. The original Flat Earth Society? Yeah. Or, yeah. or the, like the modern day one? I don't know who started the original Flat Earth Society a long time ago. Did it like um, change guards or like what happened? How did it, how did it become a well, new? Well, it was so, it was so small. Is he science? That's just it. Go if you, Once you go back too far, it gets pretty blurry as far as who did what. Um, the Flat Earth Society, the, the modern day one, uh, was so tiny, and the the one that I, in fact, I think I still have the card lying around here. Let me see if I got it lying around. Eh, okay, the card thing? Well, I was I actually joined the Flat Earth Society when I started this thing because I didn't know anything about flat Earth. So, where's my card? Oh, I gotta find that thing now. I know I I know I put it somewhere. Um. Anyway, the the point was is that I joined the uh, the Flat Earth Society, which was based out of Hong Kong. You'll know because it's the one where they use Thomas Dolby, the the, the musician, as their primary, the, like their first member. And really? he probably is a flat earther. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. That and, I didn't do that. That's yeah, oh, wow. yeah. He he was literally member number one. Now he wasn't the president of the society. They thought though he was high profile, so it's like okay, let's make him this guy. And I I. Did I, I did join it back in 2014 because I knew nothing. and But when I went to the website, it was run by trolls. I mean, the trolls were, were guarding the velvet rope, and they just were wow. telling people in chat, it's like, yeah, there's nothing to see here. Go away. There's nothing to see here. Go away. It's not real. It's not real. It's like, why would you? In fact, why are, why is anyone trolling this dedicated website? I mean, if, you, if you're a troll and you want to make people upset or you want to piss people off or make them cry, you can go to YouTube and do it all day long. I mean, that's, that's low-hanging fruit. And so I realized once I got in there that they weren't serious about anything. They hadn't done anything for years to where I, that's when I made one of my videos, I said, yeah, don't even bother with the Flat Earth Society. It looks like they're just, they're, they're completely infiltrated by people that, either trolls or people that don't want you to look into it. And which right. is funny now because people give me crap. It's like, why did you join the Flat Earth Society? You know, you shouldn't have joined the Flat Earth Society. It's bad. I'm going, yeah, dude, I was the one that told you it was bad. <laughs> so it's coming back around. I've even had people send me my own clues, though. So that's fine. Right, uh, right. It's like, have you ever seen Mark's you know, Flat Earth Clues? I go, you know who wrote Flat Earth Clues? It's like, no. It's like, uh, whatever. <laughs> it, <laughs> in your opinion, uh, is, is Flat Earth the quote-unquote movement? of our time uh it well it did okay flat earth did things which no other conspiracy could do 
uh, one, it changed, it, it forced the authority, and by the authority, I mean the people that run things, to change the rules, to, yeah. to actually Later. change. I got for that, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that they took down the YouTube scoreboard because of us, and it is that is not delusional thinking at all. I mean, I watched them do it. Uh, yeah. it's, it's that's that's amazing. I mean, with other conspiracies, you know, you can you can hide other conspiracies and bury them in the desert and, and discredit people all day long. But with Flat Earth, they were taking broad strokes uh, against us. And it was it was flattering to see in some ways. But, and, and, you know, I mean, the fact that, like, for example, but but it almost seemed like they were letting us do it like we were doing their legwork for them for a while. Like they wanted Flat Earth to get out to a certain point. Like for the first three years, we were promoted on YouTube. We were the binge topic on YouTube. Right. And it, then after it, it after was like one of the number one tag search words, right? And even in Google, it was like one of the oh yeah, number we were huge, I, yeah. absolutely monstrous. To where they were getting recommend, we were getting recommended for things. Uh, they were putting us into searches that had nothing to do with flat Earth all the time, and wow. it was driving people nuts to where they had a little Senate hearing. And they decided to just throw us in there where they were where they were going to ban certain things on YouTube. Like you couldn't talk about the 2020 election, couldn't talk about medical misinformation, and you couldn't talk about false flags. Right. And But but you're they were going to recommend... Security and Infrastructure Security Agency Act, right? I believe or, so. Or that, actually, the one you... Wait, I, actually, I take that back. Because you're talking about when it comes to the medical misinformation, that was in 2020. The one I just said was 2018. Which is when they started centering stuff, which is right yes. about when Flat Earth really started taking off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and yeah, after we had already been going pretty strong right. for for three years, and right. the numbers we were tracking amazing numbers. And I, mean, I was keep I was one of the first one of the first guys that was like watching the scoreboard constantly. And people say, oh, okay, what's the scoreboard? I go, well, when you use goes went to YouTube and you typed in a topic, like any search engine, it would say search results equals a number. And and you could do this for any anything you wanted. And one day after we had just you know we had cracked like I don't know, like the top ten in terms of you know just sheer numbers because people just kept searching, they removed that line entirely for everyone forever. So right. there is no search results equals a number anymore. That that line is gone. Right. And, and it's like that's just it just blew my mind. It's like just and I knew exactly what I was doing. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying just another way for them to hide the truth because meanwhile, you have people on the opposite side saying, oh, Flat Earth is dying. No one cares. It's nothing. It's oh, a small. God. There's nobody in it. It's stupid. But yet. Whatever. Oh, they they know better than that. Even people. our biggest trolls know better than that. And the reason we know that is because they're making videos about Flat Earth. You know, right. you if you go into, um, in fact, it's part of my speech that I'm doing in October, which is. Um, I, I saying that flat earth is the true pandemic, which is we are, uh, what's the reference I was going to use? We are the spice girls of conspiracies. And you're probably saying, what the hell does that mean? Spice girls, you guys know who they are, right? They, they are the biggest female act, musical act in history. And I, I have yet to know anyone who will admit in, in a group that they own any of their albums. So somebody was buying a lot of their albums, but nobody's admitting to it. So when you go into YouTube and you type in Flat Earth and you sort by view count, the channels you see that do Flat Earth videos are just massive. I right. just, I mean, the million, you know, pushing hundreds of millions, probably a billion hits plus, right? And yet our biggest channels, the dedicated Flat Earth channels, barely crack six figures. Barely. Wow. And there's, you know, you, you know, less than probably tw less than 20 of those, probably less than a dozen of those. Right. So what's happening? The, the people are watching a ton of flat earth videos, but nobody's subscribing to those channels because they don't right. want to get caught subscribing to the channels because right. that's public, record, right? They, you know, when you go into somebody's thing, you click on channels, yeah, you'll see. see who they're yeah. 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 So you don't want to, you don't want to get caught doing that. And uh, it, so again, 95% of our membership uh, is still in the closet, which I love. You know, I mean, uh, like the David Weiss's app. You know, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Yeah, I have it you on know, my he, phone. Yeah, yes, yeah, so do I. Um, it, it barely cracks the blue dots. Barely crack. Uh, I, he just cracked six figures, right? Yeah. 
but they're all over the place and you know full well and i've met a lot of these people a lot of people were saying yeah i'm totally into it yeah don't mention my name <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> When you I, zoom, the, it's amazing how many blue dots you see. It's amazing. There's yeah, a ton of people, yeah. even like locally. And those are just the people that are willing to put themselves out there as a blue dot. Exactly. For every one of those. A little I, check mark to broadcast you, your, you. Yeah. Yeah. For every one of those, I guarantee you there are hundreds of people that are into it that just don't want to deal with the grief. Right. And I, I don't blame them. I, I don't. Uh, it's it's a weird, you know, as far as conspiracies goes, it's a weird niche because, you, you know, once you, well, I mean, look at Kyrie Irving, uh, you know, or uh, one of our, the U.S. celebrities, where once he came out, and he came out because he was so high on life, right? You know, he just right. won his championship. I think he was 24. He yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Le LeBron James is my best friend. Everything's great. What are you going to do to me? It's like, yeah, dude championships wear off right and you're not, <laughs> right. The best, you're not the best player forever and the journalists have access to you every single night they go into the locker room what do you think they're going to ask you they're not going to ask you about offense or defense or 110 percent or coaching or any other crap they're going to ask right. you about flat earth right. and he had to deal with that for a long time to where he i remember he was at uh the forbes magazine fortune magazine or forbes forbes 30 under 30 i think and um he apologized to the uh, inner city science teachers because he was he was <laughs> destroying their credibility. Oh my! God. That's crazy. You can imagine, right? Inner, inner city science teachers like, so the world is a globe. Blah blah blah. Hands start going up in the back. And it's right. like, yeah. So my man Kyrie, he's got his own shoe line. He's got his own this and that. He makes like twenty million dollars a year. It, it's like he says it's flat. What do you got, teach? <laughs> Right, right, right. And so <laughs> these teachers would be writing Kyrie apparently on a regular basis, going, "Dude, you are killing me." <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, you they, can't, they, you can't do this. They so. seriously, it's like when you're famous, famous, you, you, you're like uh, idols to the children. So of course they're gonna censor and destroy your even reputation and career, even if you yeah. start babbling some things that's gonna, you know, persuade the minds for sure. They want to persuade so the minds. Not yeah, social media is the new. Uh, it's not even that new anymore. It is the established street cred, period. Right. Which is which right. is why I, I highly recommend if anyone wants to get a, a sobering dose of reality, watch uh, the documentary Fake Famous. It is brilliant. Uh, where they the you know a documentary team took six kids from Los Angeles, and they were on a mission to buy subs and likes and comments. And see if they can make them famous for nothing, nothing, wow. and they did. Wow! And, uh, <laughs> and and his line was wonderful in it, uh, which and I'm not on Instagram, but I get it. He goes, he goes, look, he goes, he goes, you don't understand. He goes, there are millions of people, millions of people on Instagram with at least a hundred thousand followers. Mm -hmm. He's going, there's there's like less than ten thousand famous people in the world at any given time. Who are all these people? <laughs> It's like right. it's like they're they're just people that that bought subs because right. because what happened you'll you'll get this from the gaming reference you you know what in game currency is which was you know the reason right. why Blizzard started selling their their people their like gold is because they could not stop them from buying it from the Chinese you know the Chinese were just farming gold and selling it back to the Americans you right. know game gold right and right. so all of a sudden someone came up with the idea it's like wait a minute. What's the difference between farming game gold and farming likes and hits on videos? Isn't that also just in-game currency? It's like, yeah. well, and somebody's like, well, the Americans wouldn't buy that. It's like, really? Let's try. And they did. And the, the, the one of the, the biggest abusers ever was, um, was PewDiePie. Back in the day, he figured out the system, which was you YouTube pays you on your hits and likes. And so he would take the, the hits and likes money, right? Buy more hits and likes and, and it would become cyclical, right? And he would get more subs, which means more, more money that was coming in from YouTube. And so he was getting this heavily discounted thing. The problem is, is that well, how many, when do you stop, right? When does it become ridiculous? You know, when you have, I mean, he even fooled American producers. Like when he hit like 60 million subs, American producers like, oh, God, we got to give this guy a TV show. 
he's got so many people, right? And then right. The, the the ratings just tanked. And people are like, and the producers are like, what, what, what's wrong? It's like, they're not, they're not real people. Right. So, yeah. What's you know, it, 100 million, 100, 100 have, million you ever, have you ever met someone that's like famous on, you know, social media? Have you ever been, I mean, you know, like with millions of, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it's yeah. Isn't it weird? To see, have you been with them like in public when someone comes up to them in public? Like, hey, hey, can I get your same? Well, well, that's just it. There's not as many like like the the biggest guy that I who actually was more legit than than most was um like Shane Dawson. Remember him back in the day? And uh, he, I mean, his demographic was a certain was a certain was was very young. But I remember we were in this hotel and we were spreading the rumor that he was in a hotel, the hotel we were at the com we were doing the conference at, and these you know all these girls are like hunting you know going floor to floor looking for him. And it's like for what? I mean, I get it, you know, but other people. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get me started on that. Uh, then, I'll, <laughs> then if you get me, you get me too far, then I'll start ranting about the Paul brothers. I'm just like, oh uh, <laughs> god, they're the worst. No worries, no worries. Just, just to kind of keep it back onto you know the flat Earth and stuff. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about the flat Earth movement where it's at at the moment? Oh, I you kidding? I couldn't be happier at the moment because once the mandates, you gotta remember that like before this whole thing happened you know the pandemic yeah yeah yeah. in 2019 we could do no wrong we were crushing it in 2019 absolutely all the way up until the bitter freaking end when uh when the borders closed which was you know we did we did conferences i think in seven countries that year i'd done i'd done in like i think five of them uh i i couldn't count the amount of meetups we were we you know we had done the big dallas conference uh i went over and did a, a conference in london <clears throat> okay, here's a here's a great example. I went over, did a conference in London, came back. Um, the a morning show, morning television show, calls me from London and say, "Hey, how would you like to fly back? We want you to do a morning show." It's like we can't do it on video. It's like, no, nope, no, nope, you have to come in. So I go back over there and do the morning show. Come back, and I'm coming all the way back to to West Coast, right? Right. And then I get another phone call. It's like, how would you like to come out and do a McDonald's commercial for Pancake Day? out in the UK. It's like, that's a thing. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it'll be flat and round. It'll be brilliant. And, wow. and that's passport, good. you know, bring a, bring a friend passports ready. It's going to be, it was going to be awesome. I already done, you know, the, the mobile commercial down in Australia earlier that year and early in 2019. And this was in the beginning of 2020 and we're, and well, I'm, I'm ready to pack my bags. And all of a sudden, you know, the, the borders closed and they called me up. It's like, yeah, so we don't know when, <laughs> We're uh, going to be doing anything. So and so then for three years we couldn't do international things. Uh, we couldn't because we couldn't get there. Um, right. We couldn't do domestic venues. We had to do like Karen. We did conferences. Twenty twenty, we were supposed to do Vegas, but Vegas wouldn't let you do a conference without a mask. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not going to happen. So Karen did them in North Carolina for three years. And she did them at the uh, the Shriners, well, two, three, and four. Uh, she did them at the, the Shriners convention, which is basically a Masonic hall, <laughs> a giant Masonic hall. And people are giving us crap. It's like, why are you working with the Masons? Like, going, well, because they're not requiring masks. That's why. Enemy I remember. Of my, is, yeah, enemy of my enemy is my friend. So, right. hey, let's, let more power to them. They didn't give us any grief, and we got to do our conferences. And then when the mandates finally got rolled back and everybody stayed pretty, pretty firm, uh, things were great. So right. we're doing the, the big conference now. Meetups are, you know, I've got a bunch of meetups on, on my channel in my links. And I, I just got back from a meetup in Los Angeles. I got flown out to Indiana. And yeah, everything's awesome. Did British television um, video just, uh, what, three or four days ago. Right. So got thrown off because <laughs> the because the host is dying and he's he's right. old and and he he's british british people are so when you get to if you're an older british person yeah there's nothing i can do for you right you you <laughs> believe do, whatever do, do you have any do you consider anybody like a, a top flat earther as far as how much they're doing for the movement if not yourself 
somebody else like oh yeah you- oh there's there's are you kidding there's tons of guys out there i mean the the hard i mean i couldn't even pick the hardest working person in flat earth right now i mean would it be david weiss because he has because he does so many freaking podcasts you know and he and he goes through his video clips and he he works very hard at that yeah. uh you know well, of course I'm there's- ask him too i want to i want to contact him and see if he wants to come do exactly what you're oh, doing I, I think he'd do it i think yeah. he'd do it um yeah the Hibbler Productions. Hibbler has done wonderful stuff. I, I love the, the video stuff that he's made. Um, and then you have the unsung heroes like uh, Peter Jarvio, who goes to all these campuses on the East Coast and sets up, you know, gets a permit from the, you know, goes to the quad, sets up a table. Really? And for eight hours a day for the whole week, he's there doing his routine. You know, very very short, hitting students as they go by, handing out things, and and you know, three <laughs> D prints some some flat Earth models, and and he thing was he wasn't filming. I didn't even know he came to the the meetup I was at in Indiana last year, and he he was so excited, you know, and you know he he showed up at the uh, the Flattoberfest, and it was it was awesome. So there no, there's people doing amazing amazing things, which is why like, when I go into my playlist uh under youtube there is a thing called b- 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 flat earth shortlist for new people and in it almost none of them in none of those videos in here are mine uh and the, like the hibbler productions is number one followed by another group the the black swan argument number two followed by a, a pilot from uh, uh klm airlines number three and so on and so on i don't know if i made any of these videos <laughs> in here uh-huh. So and that's no, on that's on your channel on your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, I I made it uh, a couple of years ago. It's called the Flat Earth Short Short List for for new people. Cool, and cool. Maybe uh, we we'll, we'll post that on when we when we put it on the YouTube, we can maybe you know link that and as well as oh, any yeah. other information there's, for you. There's there's great stuff in there. Uh, I, I I I tried. I mean, there's 1,500 videos on my channel now. And but I try to sort them to where they're easy to find. So you know, short list for for new people, the clues if you want to look into that, mainstream media if you're curious about that, odds and ends, the metrics. Right. I do I think called the metrics timeline, <clears throat> and that is all about the scoreboard. That is strictly what how the scoreboard the manipulation happens. essentially yeah, and then it, and then how it died. Speaking, speaking um, about speaking about that censorship, where do you think flat Earth would be right now if it wasn't for the censorship? Uh, I think it'd be, well, it's kind of a mixed bag because yeah, we should be further along, but the pandemic did, did two things. One, it, it stopped us from doing conferences for a while. Mm -hmm. So people couldn't meet face to face, but it drove people inside. So very, very true. So, and you can only watch Netflix for so long before all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you know what, what's on YouTube? And then right. people will go down rabbit holes. So we we did pretty well during right. that. I mean, there was a lot of people that got into it from their own home by themselves. It wasn't like they were shared, you know, necessarily from other people, although I'm sure that happened where people were like texting <laughs> right. each other during the pandemic saying, hey, you know, look at this, some weird stuff. <laughs> right. Hey, speaking about, you know, the censorship, we did talk about the the cybersecurity and and the infrastructure security uh, um, agency act. Now, is there any other, to your knowledge, any other military or or government projects that you know that, uh, that are being pushed to discredit flat earth and censor it? No, if you, in fact, it's funny you mentioned that because I have yet to even run into. Remember, we've been we've been doing this some of us for for eight years, and a number of us for eight years. I have not even run into anything really suspicious along those lines. Uh, if you wanted to really stunt flat Earth, if you were a military think tank, you could have done it. So many different ways you could have done it. So many algorithms you could have used to really just crush us. I mean, just right. just take us down. And the I mean the. It, yeah, back in the beginning, like when uh, the the Sparrow missile instructor, uh, when he called into Strange World, wow, eight years ago, I remember our IT guy who was who was chatting me in the back the back chat, going, "Dude, the DoD is pinging the hell out of us right now," and it's like, of course they were, 
They they want to know exactly what he's saying because you know this is a Navy guy who trains people on missile systems. They want to know you know if this guy is going to go off the rails. If all of a sudden <laughs> it's like, oh by the way, here's how to compromise the United States Navy <laughs> missile system, right? Right, and and which would be into the program. They they'd cut that thing off in two seconds. But no, I mean, but that's expected. You know, nobody's ever. We, we've never heard a story of somebody following anybody with you know with. Um, with black cars and sunglasses and you know, right. nobody nobody showed up at the conference that that somebody came up to me later and said dude that guy is super suspicious <laughs> uh, no nobody's ever and and to my you know people have asked me it's like has anyone ever approached you the fact that no one's even approached me and i'd, I'd tell you if somebody did you know for or against nobody's nobody's ever followed me i'm super easy to find i've never gotten a weird email never gotten a weird phone call Right. So they're letting us do this. I was just going to say that, which kind of leads to other stuff that we'll talk about. I'll bring up later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely down going down that road. But I, I'll talk about some other stuff later in regards mm -hmm. to that. Uh, it, is there anything that you may know about um, that most flat earthers and globers don't know uh, because of censorship? You know, that, that you know, kind of like the behind the scenes because you're in it is there anything oh that's... no no we we let it all out um there is nothing anything that comes out we full transparency we, yeah we, we yeah we what, what would we why would we hide it whatever it would be oh you mean like like a failure like an experiment failure no okay. no as a matter that that'd be the only thing we would hide and we're pretty upfront to where when we we do screw up for whatever reason we figure out why i mean luckily for us like the the one the the um the most obvious ones that was talked about was uh, the Jaron laser experiment during the documentary. Right. And you know, it's like, oh, you know, Jaron screwed up and he proved that it was a globe. I was like, no, no something something happened, but that wasn't it. Right. Luckily for us, most of the general public didn't even know by the, because I sat in the studio audiences when when that film was 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 put out there. <clears throat> most of the studio audience, you know, they're, they're not very smart. So they didn't know what was happening anyway. They didn't even know, even if it was a, a complete success, what it would have meant you know even if the laser you know would have did exactly what jaron wanted it to and jaron would be like see i told you right they, they still wouldn't have got it <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I talked to these people and then i said do you know what happened it's like no but it was bad right i was like do you even know what that experiment was supposed to do no but it failed right i was going uh, right yeah um like like that one for example the that was just the power of editing more than anything but to be fair, Jaron did not do, it, it's a rookie mistake, but it, we, we all run into him. You know, he didn't do line of sight during the daytime. He, he right. assumed the place where he was at was flat because Google Earth told him it was flat. And when he, when he drove out there in the daytime, finally, you know, on his own, two months after the movie came out, he's like, oh, so I don't have line of sight. It's like, oh, dude. What the hell? It's like, which, <laughs> which is why you, you know, they call it a dry run for a reason. You never bring the camera teams in, right? right. You know, until you know what you were looking at. And had he, right. had he gone there, like even a week earlier and run it, it's like, oh yeah, we can't use this spot. We're going to have to use something over water, which was what they should have done. Right. Like, eh. No, I mean, everything else we, we tell people, um, the only, the only stuff we kind of keep to, to our, to ourselves or our, um, uh, personal things, you know, if right. there's inner, inner squabbles, we, we don't generally make videos about it because we don't want, why, why air dirty laundry? Right. Um, or, or like, like I, I mean, I can talk about it now, like, like Bob, you know, he had health concerns. Uh, it had nothing to do with the shots. Um, and he had them for years. And uh, I mean, you're a bigger guy. People also don't know little, little aesthetic knowledge things you should pick up on them. It's like every inch over six, two, every inch that you are your life expectancy goes down you're mm. the you know basketball mm. players big football players they don't live you know to to be you know a ripe old age right and uh, you know it's, because they it's harder on the body right uh, you know it's the same sort of organs especially the heart and and other things and so he ran into problems and right. so but we didn't talk about it and right. until finally it's like you know he passed away and then people were saying oh was it the shot it's like no it wasn't the shot <laughs> he, he uh, just in fact he he hadn't gone to the doctor in 
years, which I'm a big believer in. You know, it's like, look, if you feel really, really bad, you, maybe you go see the doctor. But again, that was three, you know, I would have said that three years ago, but not now. I go, <laughs> yeah. I, I go you break your leg, go into the doctor. Sure, have them set it and get the hell out of there. You're right. Uh, you have a respiratory issue, pff, might yeah. as well stay home. Right, just yeah. eat, eat soup and, I don't know, pray or something. <laughs> right. Speaking which, of prayer, which, which, are you religious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I caught some hell for it when I was on that um, a British show the other day because uh, I said that this place was you know, most likely built by God, and he was an atheist. Uh, and like he came after me and, and uh, you know, said I was an idiot, and I wanted to come back. So, well, and then so would be 80% of the known world, you know, which falls into one of the five major religious categories. But, hey, you know what? <laughs> you do what you do, and you're fine. Uh, but do you, uh, yes. do you yeah. think uh, religion plays a big role or can play a big role in flat Earth? Oh, it, it always has been. Uh, yeah. you, it, at least, especially in America, I can't speak for other countries, but in the United States, we uh, half of the at least half of the the um, uh, the flat Earth membership is made up of hardcore evangelical Christians, and I know this <laughs> because there were. Flat back in the day, they were flat earth conferences that were yeah. Christian only, where I wasn't even allowed to come speak at because I didn't quote enough chapter and verse. That gives you right. an idea. And like the, the first conference <laughs> we did in Raleigh, which was in the documentary, the feedback afterwards, it was almost 50-50 split, which was 50% said it was too religious, 50% said it wasn't religious enough. Wow. And so by the time we rolled into Denver, we had to split, you know, split the, the programs up and Dallas had two stages and, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, right. it's religion plays a huge, huge part. And why wouldn't it? I mean, right. if, if you were in a building, then it was built. It was created by something or someone. Right. And right. There, there's a lot of people would be like that they came back to the church because of it uh the one of the big christian conferences back in i think it was 2018 uh, right i remember that was one of their quotes where they said they were doing this little panel at the end of the thing and they said we've never seen a recruiting tool for the church that has been stronger than flat earth you know where wow. people keep a lot of people came back to the church because it's like no 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 any that extra three four percent you know that i got out of the whole flat earth thing yeah that mm -hmm. that's convinced me now and it's like all right <laughs> cool. I mean, I don't go to church every Sunday, but I I would never disparage God publicly. <laughs> that's for right. sure. Right. Do, do you believe in the uh, the outer pond theory, the the land and territories beyond the ice wall? Sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, it, it it's a good it's a good theory. If if you've got one of these, why wouldn't you have more? The right. the, the question then becomes. And I could go either way, uh, which is the the other civilizations, are they allowed to come in and visit or are they kind of trapped in their area? What's the hierarchy? I, right. I don't know, but there seems to be rules in place, meaning right. uh, obviously, because otherwise, you know, a golden spaceship has never landed in the middle of Spain and people have gotten out and taken selfies and, and signed autographs. It's never <laughs> happened. And I yeah. think... And if you have any doubt of that, look up the, the, the greatest UFO sighting of all time, the, um, the 1561 Nuremberg event, which has its own wiki page, by the way. Right. And Is that the one where all the trees just kind of like laid out in all directions in a circular direction? No, no. That was the Tunguska blast of, oh, that's uh, right. of the early 1900s. This one was hundreds of years earlier where two giant space armadas showed up over uh, Nuremberg, Germany and on a beautiful April day cloudless day and just start blasting away at each other for an hour wow. and and then a third oh yeah look it up it's a fantastic fantastic wow. uh, thing where a third faction of one singular giant black craft shows up between them these two guys take off and then that black craft hangs out for a little while and then takes off on its own remember this predates cameras by a long time but it was you know an hour is plenty of time to sketch it and they sketched everything in great detail Wow. The question is, what sort of hierarchy are we looking at here? I mean, right. who are these first two groups? You know, were they gang members? <laughs> They're fighting. Right? <clears throat> what, what, what sort? Yeah, and who was the third group? Was they the? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? 
And right. the bigger one for me, which you know, I was trying to piece it together, you know, from the gaming world, which is what sort of response time is an hour, right? <laughs> I mean, I I live in a pretty secluded island. I could I could take a handgun, fire a few rounds outside that window. There will be cops here in ten minutes. Uh, well, it must but, have been like a ghetto area where the cops are very. They don't really care, you know. Takes well, a long time. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but an hour for for to to they there must have been a dead zone where uh, <laughs> over Nuremberg, Germany, where there was no coverage at the time, where they right. weren't no one was watching the skies in Nuremberg, Germany. I don't know how mm -hmm. they knew this, and they did some. You know, it wasn't like a flash mob, you know, where everyone was dancing. I mean, they were right. <laughs> right. They were. Ha it, it was like two giant flying aircraft carriers. That's start very unload, unloading that. fighters. Look, look, look it up if you get a chance. Um, look yeah. up the the drawing. Uh, when you look up the wiki page, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely wow. gorgeous. And people and you know scientists are like, oh, it's sun dogs. I'm going sun dogs. I go, wow. I go on a on a on a cloudless April day for an hour. Where where and again, remember in 1561, science fiction didn't exist. So True. there was they they thought it was a religious event. They they didn't know how to explain it. It's like what the hell's happening here but they drew it all um anyway so do wow. i do i think there are rules that are tied to this place yes and i think they're very strict you, uh because as you know there's ships that are flying around this place all over the constantly right. absolutely right. constantly but they're not landing anywhere i think that's you know if you i think the prime directive i'm stealing from star trek here does apply which is you are not allowed. You can do some things. You want to pick off some campers here. The beans. The what? It, it, I think in Star Trek, it was like, you can go there, but you can't interact with the beans of the planet. Right, right. Now, you can do it isolated. Again, you want to you want to pick up some hikers. You want to go after some fishing boats, you know, off in the distance. Sure. You cannot interact with a major city or even right. a, a, a town for that matter. You that was can't. one of my next questions. Is with all the talk lately about extraterrestrials, do you yeah. believe in the aliens and maybe possibly like are they just entities from beyond or spiritual beings or ancient civilizations? Like it or, could or be ancient ancient civilizations. Uh, I I to clarify, and I've said this many times. I go, they're not from Mars or Venus or Jupiter or anything like that. They're just old versions of us. That's mm -hmm. it. Uh, they are old civilizations. Now they they have advanced technology obviously anyone that seems to be flying around it has the same fundamental engine which i call the the unified field engine and which is a standard ufo engine right it's you know it can move you around sideways and it has nothing to do with aerodynamics it can do you can do anything you want you can go underwater it's basically a flying car and once you have that i mean you can run circles around anything we do uh, but yeah, ancient civilizations, older versions of us, and I think eventually we will become one of those civilizations right. where, you know, kind of like a senior class where once you graduate, it's like, well, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So because right. we have another class coming in. So you right. guys got to got to go. Keep it moving. Yeah. yeah and then you were moved off to on some other place. So buildings on AI, which will probably help us get to that uh, place, I guess. The what? Feelings uh, uh, about artificial intelligence, which will probably oh, no, 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 no. no. A AI is all AI is. So how can I make this easy? It is a data compiler, and by that I mean here's what's changed between 20 years ago and now. There is so much content in all forms on the internet. The clouds are stuffed to the freaking gills with everything you can think of. Just just pick on YouTube for example. I mean. There are hundreds and hundreds of hours of content being uploaded every second, right? There's so much content that now people have figured out, it's like, oh, hey, if we just get like a, like a cherry picker program, we can start picking pieces of different content and then use this little compiler and create sort of new content, <laughs> kind <laughs> of, from, from all the bits of the other stuff because we've seen it, right? There's nothing new under the sun. We, right. We've seen all the television shows. We've seen all the movies. We know all the formulas. Oh, it's a buddy cop picture. Oh, it's a romantic comedy. Oh, it's a, you know, it's an action. You know, oh, it's a sweeping epic. We mm -hmm. can do, we can do these now. So where <clears throat> all AI is doing is allowing people to skip some steps. You don't have to do anything from scratch anymore. 
Yeah, you can literally go into AI. It's like, write me a screenplay for an hour-long Star Trek episode starring this star and this star. I want to make it politically correct here, not politically correct here. Let's throw in some some jokes about Klingons, and it'll write it for you. <laughs> And yeah. then you you has the it, it's really good at writing templates and what it's what it's all it's really done is it's ruined. <laughs> You're never gonna I feel in fact the education system they're screwed because they won't you should never assign an essay ever again yeah. because because kids all they have to do is like write an essay on the Louisiana Purchase from a uh, seventeen or nineteen year old's perspective. Using using only nineteen year old verbiage if you're smart, right? Right. And it'll crank it out for you. And did you see did you see the South Park episode about chat GBT? No, what was it doing? Oh, oh man, that was such a good episode. So like there's two different things going on. One is they are using it in the school and they call in this like team. Like this guy that like hunts down people that use chat GBT and he knows like he could read a, something and he knows that a computer made it. And then the other part of that whole uh, 30 minute show is that like chat GBT is like saving a, a relationship because he, he's using chat GBT to talk to his girlfriend. And then and then once she once she learns that it, it wasn't him the whole time. Because yeah. all the guys were doing it. All the girls were like, oh, my God, look at my boyfriend's so sweet. But they were talking to a computer. Anyways, you're right about I, it. That's yeah, I mean, the, the other thing it, it'll do, which this part I actually like, is uh, because now uh, the software, and it's a different, different type of software. It's not GPT software. It's emulation software. We've gotten the routines down. Part, partly you can blame Auto-Tune. Uh, but now you can, I, I guarantee it's, it, it's already happening. You will be able to buy an audio book and have it read by just about any celebrity you could think of. Because the celebrities have already signed off on their likenesses, all the likenesses, all yeah. digital likenesses. So Black Mirror heard... just did an episode on it. I don't yeah? know if you saw it. Oh no, no, I, I didn't I didn't see it, but I, I can probably guess. I mean, like there was somebody that sent me something where they had um Emma Emma Watson, I believe, you know, the the girl from Harry Potter. Yeah. They had her reading, now this was audio, it wasn't video, had her reading the first chapter of Mein Kampf. Wow. And it was flawless. And that is because British people have that very deliberate delivery, you know, it's very dry. It's not, it's not very animated. And, but it sounded exactly like her. And, right. you know, the other stuff, you know, the, the, the songs, of course, are a little trickier to do. Like they, that one guy that made um, Elvis singing uh, Baby Got Back. Which, right. believe it or not, was not terrible uh, <laughs> with the instrumentation and everything. So, but no, there, AI, the 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 where they ruined it was AI didn't used to be called about this. AI was a movie term that meant uh, self-aware machines that could all of a sudden start talking to you. Come right? sentient. Yeah, it's sentient, and it's like okay, or sentient, your your choice. And it's like, no, no. I mean, that that's what it used to mean. But now, no, it's not. Now AI is, it's just this big blanket term for everything. So now you have to say self-aware, sentient. No, right. that, that will never, ever, ever, hang on, wait for it, ever happen. And I'm telling you this from a programmer side of things because we can't even come up with the flow chart to start writing something like this because you have to look at yourself. It's like, define your own soul, right? Try to try to define your null soul. Okay, then write that down, and then try to see how you could program that. We can't even we can't even define ourselves. And we it's so we, in the movies it was this running joke. And I've told people I go the only reason things were ever self aware in the movies was one of three things happened: either radioactive goo fell on the circuit board, lightning struck the super circuit board, or some sort of ghost possessed the circuit board. Right. That's that's it. Or or a combination of the three. And that was it. And it was like, oh, like weird people science. Like, oh, okay. the what? Like like the movie Weird Science. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Weird science was one of the, the and again, that was back when people knew nothing about computers. They yeah. still don't. So it's like, no, no, when people talk about Skynet and, and all this other crap, it's like, no, no. It's a great science fiction term. No, don't get me wrong. We want there are super nerds out there that would love to make that happen. We don't even know 
the starting point. So when Elon Musk comes out and says, oh, this could be the end of humanity, it's like, you freaking fraud. Stop <laughs> stop chiming in on stuff you know nothing about. The fear mongering. Every, every programmer I've ever talked to, they all say the same thing. It's like, dude, it's like, it's not, it's not that we're 50 years away or 100 years away from it. We can't even imagine doing it, you know, creating artificial life, artificial. Now, to be fair, to be fair, uh, you can look it up if you want, if you get a chance. Uh, the closest anyone ever came to really describing it was the, the father of all computers. His name was Alan Turing, who made the Turing test. Uh, there was a wonderful movie made about him uh, called The Imitation Game which was about him cracking the Nazi enigma machine. Yeah, that, you know, that was right. a really good movie too. The Imitation it Game was a was wonderful, a... Yeah, wonderful movie. Right. I mean, you got to remember that he was, he predated all modern computers because they classified it and they tore everything down after the war was over. I was going to say, just... dude, they almost didn't have it because his boss wanted to stop him, right? In the movie, at least. Yeah. They almost would have like messed up, but he was like, no, we're going to, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> In the movie, at least, he, according to the movie. Yeah, and well, I believe it, uh, and and I I still think he's the one of the greatest assets of World War II that was no one ever talked about because he was classified. Even after the war was over, they did not talk about. It. They didn't want to leak that out. The British keep secrets. Um, but the the what's interesting was the movie title had nothing to do with the movie. The movie title was taken straight from his wiki page, which was he realized that when computers got to a certain point we could the closest we could get they we could they could imitate us but they couldn't be us so mm -hmm. that's when he came up with the turing test which of course was used in blade runner it's like how do you if you're talking to a, a an android right the yeah. super realistic android how do you know they're not how do you know they're a machine and it's, it's it, it, and of course the questions aren't standard, but but he threw that out there. The closest we could ever get is an Im imitation, which is if you stuffed enough programming into a machine, they could pretend to be human. That's as far as we can go. Right. You know, they can they can basically they have like, kind of like Terminator, right? They have enough responses to your questions, yeah, that they will sound sort of realistic in text but come on we can't even we can't even get the uh the voice thing perfect that's right. that's tough 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 to do i mean look at the movie well, her so, well i was I was, yeah i was reading something and in regards to um they said that within three years we won't be able to, to we won't be able to recognize like reality from cgi in real time with famous people even kind of like what black mirror was about they were using like someone else's image, a digital image, and they were in like a movie, like on the Netflix yeah. thing. And yeah, that was the most recent season. Yeah, right. And then, and then that kind of was along. I saw, I did see a video like last week about Emma Watson, and she was saying like, "I love to suck," blah blah blah. You know, and she was very right. being very vulgar, but it was a it was a CGI. It was a deep fake. They call it right, the deep fake. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, deep. Of course, like like everything, like every form of media, um, whatever new technology always goes into the adult market first. You're right. Uh, deep, deep. Well, NASA's deep got it down pretty much. The what? Pretty, pretty good. NASA's got it down pretty good as far well, as well. Yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, they still cut corners and they don't want to take risks. Like for Artemis, for example, when Artemis One supposedly went around the moon and back. Uh, the the moon, you know, they they deliberately smudge the moon, so they're fifty miles away from the moon, right? And it's some of the lowest grain stuff I've ever seen. I mean, it's like what, you guys are deliberately just making it look awful. We're shooting supposedly better footage from here, and you're point blank array, uh, uh, range range right. away, right? Um, but the other thing, you know, Artemis missed something, which again the general public doesn't get, and that is. Hundreds and hundreds of hours, you know, combined hours of all these different cameras, no stars ever, right. Right. ever. And it's like, and so, and so where I'm, I'm any journalist that will listen, it's like, so there's no stars in space. I just right. want to be clear on that. There's no stars in space. You, Artemis showed no stars ever. And, right. and you want to claim that back with Apollo and say, well, it's an exposure setting. That's fine. Yeah, it's 2023, kids. Everything's <laughs> digital everything's high tech we have right. high-end computers in these things it's just a question of settings right you can right. you can crank the contrast in real time and change the change the stars to whatever but they don't want to risk it because well, they don't 
they'll start still nervous about putting in the wrong uh, star patterns. Well, that reminds me of one of my questions from later, but I'll read it now. How do you yeah. feel about the cameras and telescopes with the technology to show pre-installed images? Is that even true? Is that accurate? Like I just heard this earlier and he was talking about if you go buy a, a thousands of dollars of telescope, it's digitally like, and he said it even says right there, like in the manual that they're digitally like put there, they're, they're installed images already. So you think you're yeah, looking at Saturn, but it's already, it's like, it's in the lens of the system. Have you heard oh, about yeah, that? It's, it, yeah. It's not just in telescopes, man. It's in, it's in phones. Oh, he, uh, that's I, what he said in, in the latest iPhone. Yeah. He's, he yeah. There was a story. We, well, we ran this probably three, four months ago, at least where, um, someone figured out again if it's not the internet misses nothing the hive mind is going to figure it out either by accident or deliberately right. and what, what was happening was he was shooting a shot from uh from a distance of the moon right and it wasn't that good but then when he, sh he looked at his phone he's like hey wow that looks like a real that's a really good shot of the moon right it filled in the blanks with its own right. you know from from the cloud but then I think, if I'm not mistaken, he shot like a like a just to prove the point. He shot like a light bulb through a curtain, same sort of thing, and it and it and uh, it it recognized it as the moon, and and did wow. the same thing. It started filling in the blanks. So yeah, that's a bit that's a bit much. Now, do I think it's it's deceptive deliberately to make pe people believe more in space? Maybe, or is it a way for the uh, the camera company to just make their their product look better? You know what I mean. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you can enhance trees, it's if it's image enhance, it's image enhancement on a new level. But it doesn't it doesn't help us. That's for sure. Uh, but right. but you know what? Because it gets found out, it does make it it look kind of iffy. It's like, all right, what are you guys doing? What are you guys trying to hide? I don't right. honestly, I don't think. I don't think they're really trying to hide anything. I think they're just trying to make their product look better uh, because it's yeah. not, it's not like they're doing image enhancement just for the moon. I guarantee right. they're doing it for, for all sorts of not, plants, not just, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Plants, water, and not just that colors, colors in general. I mean, we've done it. How many times, how many filters do we mess with on right. a regular basis right. when we, when we look at stuff <laughs> um, as, as far as the claim that we will be fooled, when I look at, when, I've heard this before, where people say, "Oh, in three years, we're not going to be able to tell." It. I've I've heard this three years ago, and then three years before right. that, and then three years before that. So eventually, then we, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we can with still images. We can do a lot, right? To where Photoshop, and if you're really good at Photoshop, you can do amazing things. Real time, it's still tricky to do. There's too many. Too many little things that can go wrong. I mean, look at all the NASA stuff that that have, they have tried to do live, and right. you know, even if they're doing it down here from an Air Force base, there's lots. I mean, come on, how many streams that you've seen over the years where things right. go wrong? Uh, there's a reason why in in general media, right? I mean, how many thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of hours of television broadcast, mainstream television broadcasts, almost right. none of them are live because producers are scared to death of doing anything live because of mistakes. Right. Right. Human so. error. Yeah. So yeah. one going back to the AI real quick. Uh, yeah. My, one of my questions was, do you see it helping in any way to spread the truth um, more efficiently or, you know, any, any way to help, you know, the movement in any way, AI and, and then to follow up on that, a better question how do you think we can use it to help us accomplish those things if there was a way to do it? Um, uh, it's not going to hurt us. Uh, AI is not going to hurt us. Um, AI, well, the only thing AI is going to help us do is, uh, building. In fact, when it comes to video content, I don't really know if AI is going to do much. Uh, it's most of the stuff that AI is de deals with is text. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's written. Uh, yeah. voice, voice stuff. I mean, yeah, we played around with it in the beginning. You know, I, I listened to David, a fake David Weiss thing and people didn't want for a fake thing for me and something like that. But most of the people in our community are animated enough to where it's tough to, they'd, they'd be spotted pretty quick. So no one's, no one's even bothered, bothered doing it. Uh, they'd, they'd rather just 
create their own work rather than than you use AI. I think it just comes off as more authentic. Kind of like subliminally how auto-tune has made music, no offense to if you're a huge music fan, has made music just so homogenized over right. the last 10, 10 years where I don't find me a major hit in the last 10 years, which really, really stuck out um, because all the producers are using the same tools now. They're right. using the same blending things. It's like, you know, and I get it. It's, you know, it's like all, all of a sudden it's like everyone, they don't even agree to do it. It just happens. It's like, oh yeah, you're going to use Photoshop. You know, we'll just use the, the image part of it. If everyone's using Photoshop, you're going to start seeing the same, same tricks. And if everyone's using the same audio software, then you're going to start hearing the same thing. And after a while, everything just starts blending in with each other. So yeah. the stuff, the stuff that we make, it comes off as more authentic. Uh, right. I have I have yet to of all the videos that I've heard out there. In fact, I I can't remember one that uh, that was um, that was auto generated. Wow! You know the only the only ones I hear that are auto generated are the generic ones that are done from people in another country. You know they're they're worried that their accent might stick out too much. <laughs> yeah, and they, and it's that old school, you know the the old school reading where it's pretty choppy. You know right. you know what you're listening to. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, what do you What do you say to those that think flat Earth is just nothing but a psyop? Well, if it's a psyop, what What's it doing exactly? If it's a psyop, it's the the kindest, most gentle psyop that ever was. I mean, uh, <laughs> we we have conferences where the the male to female ratio is three times higher women than um than anything else because if women have bs detectors say what you want about them but they tend to um uh spot you know so i mean it resonates with a lot of, i mean i go i go to meetups the california meetup i did there was a, tons of women that were there and it's like you know i asked them it's like hey why are you here and they say oh we're here because flat earth has a, a positive message you know, it's 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 a message of hope. You know that, that you're not just you know some rock flying through space. That you're here in a building. You're made for a reason. You're here for a purpose. What that exact purpose is, don't know. But at least it gets you one step closer to finding out. Right. And so, if it's a psyop, what, what do you? You know, I I know back in the day, it's like, oh, you're making other conspiracies look, you know, look bad. It's like, yeah, dude. We, we didn't have to do that. Everybody, everybody in the old conspiracy world before we got there, they were already doing that, you know, because they were talking in low tones about how everything was dark and, <laughs> right. and they talked like Batman. And wow. it, and that was, that was really it. I mean, you know, everything's sinister, 9-11 and JFK and, and don't get me wrong. I, I'm a big fan of all those, all those conspiracies, but Flat Earth isn't that. Flat Earth right. is bigger than that. Every other conspiracy except for Flat Earth was done by man. There's the difference. You know, we created all the other conspiracies. In fact, most of the major conspiracies are American. And this one was bigger. This one was here before the United States was even founded. It was here before civilization even really got going. All we did was try to keep the secret. And it wasn't just us. It was a number of other countries as well. So, no. PSYOP? Pff, what? To, to, to move 9-11 to a lower peg? It's like... It's like <laughs> That, that was going to happen naturally. Because, come on. 9-11 was just about, you know, that was a single city in the United, in a single country, right? Well, unless you want to throw in D.C., right? But, but de <laughs> definitely just one one country. Uh, right. Flat Earth is the whole world. How, how could you even compare the two? It's it's right. not it's not the same thing. And if anything, the other the other conspiracy world, uh, you know, the, the hardcore guys, they should be thanking us because once you get if you once you get into flat earth you have to revisit every other conspiracy you've ever you've ever looked at i mean if you if you weren't really into other conspiracies and all of a sudden you you, you i've seen it you, you get into flat earth you're like wait a minute if they could hide this they could hide anything and, it's, and then all of a sudden you start revisiting every single thing you ever did which is why again i i i can't criticize anyone that comes up to me with a fringe conspiracy anymore i can't Right. beforehand i'd be like get the hell out of here now i'd be like i'll give you a couple minutes <laughs> sure right. why not i mean i'm into flat earth what's gonna what's gonna top that right right so now let me let me here's a here's the next question and and i don't want you to feel bad about this question 
Uh, I've been accused as well uh, by a piece of crap, by the way, uh, to be a a CIA agent, right? And and, uh, me. Oh, you? I feel bad because I also have been thought of to be a CIA agent. Uh, By a piece of crap, it doesn't matter. But I'm saying I I, I heard somewhere that you are, that you've also been maybe a CIA uh, agent and uh, spreading disinformation to start a psyop, and and right. to me, I'm like, it's that that sounds exactly like what a CIA agent would do because they they're gonna spread something about somebody to discredit the individual, and, and well, I mean, that make sense? in in this in 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 my case, and the, the 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 accusations for me, and yes, officially, yes, I am. Well, I'm either the greatest secret agent in the world or I'm the worst. <laughs> Take your pick. Because I, if, I, I'm, if I'm the greatest, it's like, well, okay, my master plan, I've got to unfold it sometime, I suppose. No, th- that whole thing started with with Eric Dubay back in, the, back in 2015 when I wouldn't, his people contacted me and they wanted me to handle interviews a certain way. Meaning Eric had, he, Eric, there's certain people, there's egos in everything that we do, right? I mean, right. in every part of, of the media world, there's egos that, that conflict with each other. He does not like sharing. He never has, and he doesn't want anyone else in the flat earth. He wants to be, you know, and I get it. There's a competitive nature in him. It's like, all right, fine. Yeah. Uh, but when I wouldn't go along with it, he immediate, He and Matt Boylan immediately started trying to discredit me and put the, the rumor out there to the point. I didn't even take it seriously. To the point, and you'll see this. There's a little part in the movie a lot of people missed, and I was I was disappointed, but I I understood the drama value of it, which was Eric told ODD he convinced ODD that I was a government agent, and he and ODD came out and said anyone that bought the tickets to the 2017 conference you shouldn't go. Now remember these are non-refundable tickets, right? And I'll be damned if those people did not go. There was like a hundred and something seats in the back completely paid for empty wow <laughs> because odd was like oh you shouldn't go right and he regretted that later because he ended up going to our conferences um and <laughs> but only because eric told him to and, and to this day eric still i mean he's got an enemies list up there on uh, ifers.org i believe international flat earth research society um He's still got the enemies list up there from 2015. I'm up there, number one with a bullet. No reason why whatsoever. It's like, really? You're just going to keep holding on to this for eight years? Even yeah. though I have never, I have said, that I, I will I will give myself some credit, which is, uh, you know, I have kept the same interview process. I, I've lost count. I'm thinking I've passed 500 interviews, which is saying something considering David Weiss is over 1,000, I think, at this point. Yeah. Um, and I've never deviated from from anything. Eventually, if you're a, if you're going to do the disinfo thing, what you do is this textbook. You take them down for a certain while, and then you just go off road, right? And then then you just sink it. But if if the whole plan was to sink flat Earth, why didn't I do it in the very beginning? Why let it out at all? Right. Right. Why Why even make the clues to start with if right. I was going to do it? Well, that, and well, not only that, but. I, that, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry to take off, but that's why I'm saying it's it would be more of a CIA thing to do to discredit someone and by saying they're CIA, it's almost like a double agent type thing going on. Like it's very, well, very yeah, except, except that I and, and I've looked ever we we've got a pretty sharp group of people. We I have never in the years that I've been doing this, I have never even heard a a, a true rumor. You know, where someone came out. I mean, no one's actually sat me down, by the way. I said, dude, there's some real concerns that you're like a government <laughs> agent, right? No one's ever actually done that to me. Yeah. And nor has that ever happened to anyone that, that's been um that's been that's been doing things. Now, I mean, come on, the most suspicious person I ever met in the flat earth community was Patricia. And that was because her backstory didn't make any damn sense. I truly think she could be some sort of robot. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> She, but, but do I think she was CIA agent? No. Alien robot? Possibly. But no, <laughs> but nobody else, no one's been thrown out. No one's been shunned. Nobody's been, uh, uh, you know, there's never been a committee. It's like, we really need to talk about this guy over here because right. he seems really sketchy. Right. It's, ne- it's never happened. I don't think there are any official shills 
in the Flat Earth community, at least not at the speaker level. And now, there could be some general people, but why would you just be a general member if you're going to be part of the thing? And I'll throw one more out at you. If you want to really derail this thing, and I put this out there years ago, it's like all you have to do is do something really horrible in the name of Flat Earth. You know what I mean? All you have to do is like... <laughs> You know, go blow up something, or you know, and and wear like a flat Earth shirt, and that would that would hurt us. Oof, that would hurt us. I mean, Vic Jaron and I joked about that because there was a, a a big enthusiast of flat Earth up in Canada, and he parked this boat, yeah, just run of the mill ski boat, and he wow. and he spray painted flat Earth graffiti all over it, and he parked it in the middle of this mall parking lot. Right. And, and, you know, the police were concerned. Now it wasn't American police. It was Canadians. So they're just walking up to him like, what's going on? The American police, they would have had the bomb squad and the whole nine yards. I remember Jaron getting a hold of me. It's like, dude, that boat's going to blow up. I know it. <laughs> I, go, I go, well, that would be a way to do it. If you want to, to make us look bad, no one's ever done anything that is painted flatter than a bad light. I mean, not really. Find me one. Find me. Find me somebody that you know ran naked through the streets, or you know stole a car and and ran into something. I mean, it's it's never ever happened. So wow. no, we're we. I think I think we're pretty good. So you're not a so government. Right. Agent. <laughs> so what? So you're not a government agent, right? Oh no, I'm absolutely a government agent. No, All again, right. if I, if I was oh sorry, what one one more From thing along part... those lines to to, to that point. And I made sure doing this, that was one of the reasons I did what I did, which was I, I have never, that has never changed. I have doxxed myself since day freaking one. Uh, you go to the description box of every single video that I make on YouTube and yeah. my, um, my email, my phone number, my full name, um, my home address. Speaking about everything. your name, speaking about your name, I've, yeah. I've been told that, is that a stage name or your real name? Oh no, it's my real name. Um, <laughs> okay. my, uh, my, my father's, so from what was weird is here's where it gets weird is so on my mother's side of the family, um, it's Purvis. And I did a video on this re fairly, fairly recently. Cause I was saying how weird it was that my grandparents even met, you know, uh, cause my grandfathers actually knew each other when they were in school. Weird. Um, <laughs> but it, my grandfather's name was George Sargent. And named from his father, George Sargent. And he married uh, a woman named Phyllis Cannon, of all things. So a military rank and a military piece of equipment. I thought that was awesome. So no, <laughs> no, it's actually it's actually my 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 real name. So my my middle name is Kendall. I don't think that does much for me, but so uh, but yeah, actually it's a built it's it's a cool I, I like the name. I, I was I always thought it was kind of fun. Yeah, Mark Sargent. It's phonetic, it's, it's phonetic it's though. And and one more thing, real quick which is my last name is an anagram for really only one word. You know what it is? Sergeant? Yeah. Uh, and you spell it S-A-R-G-E-N-T? Yep. I got I to gotta look at it. I'll look at Sergeant. Oh. You'll never get it. You could if you threw it into like a Scrabble helper. It's, it's really <laughs> only only one word. Strange. Uh, no, the word is strange. It's strange. It does. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, but people don't get it because sergeant's two syllables and strange is one. Right. I see uh, it now. Strange. Interesting. Yeah. Had, and I did not know that for decades. Had I known that in high school, I would have signed my annuals completely differently. I would have put I would have put sergeant and then I would put, you know little connector things and i would put strange underneath it it would have been awesome right. but no right. okay. i didn't, didn't figure <laughs> out the later. um uh, another question uh yeah. have you ever traveled to the places that are being contested um or have any desires to like uh for instance like Pontchartrain, mount rainier the black swan oil rigs off the pacific coast oh i've, like, I've been to the I, I i was just at the oil rigs on um on the pacific coast nice. uh they, it's not just santa barbara by the way the the oil rigs are all all up and down southern california right they uh they're they're all right offshore yes i have been there yes have i been to mount rainier yes have i been to lake pontchartrain no 
but I don't have to go to Lake Pontchartrain. But I've been to a whole bunch of other bodies of water and done tests. I did the the Salton Sea test for National Geographic. Uh, right. I don't know, but yes, I, I have been to these places. Yes. Hey, sure. not not to ask too much information. If you don't want to answer, it's okay. But that's okay. How much did it cost to go do the uh, salt, the sea uh, salt? Um... Salt and sea. Salt and sea. Yeah. Oh, that was free because uh, um, National Geographic paid for it. <laughs> oh well, okay. I gotta, they... I gotta get National Geographic some out of fun. My, uh, I, I want to do. I got a bucket list of experiments that I want to do and put on YouTube and 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 go. I want to do the trip, um, South America to Africa, to Australia, back to South america oh I, you want to do the the plane route the plane yeah. trip yeah i mean you could if you wanted to we've had some people that have done similar trips along those lines the the more interesting thing though i mean it's a that's a pretty boring trip by the way man i mean you'd be spending a lot of hours not doing much um right. but there's other flights you could do that would would show you more more relevant information one would be of course the, the level test which i love which is you get in a plane and I've done a lot of business travel. And again, you couldn't see the forest for the trees, which was when you get up to cruising altitude, you are flying perfectly level. I mean, tabletop when it's clear air, you are is is freaking rock solid. You'd never knew you were in an airplane except for the noise. And even then, you know, you could put a blindfold a guy, put him on a plane, you know, have him wake up on a plane. He'd probably think he was on a bus. Um, and you're saying, why is that got to do anything? It's like, well, because if a plane's traveling at 500 and something miles an hour, it will have to either nose down every so often or nose up, depending on how you look at it, to adjust for the curvature. Right. And it never does. And when you're on a plane, even when a plane drops 500 feet, you are well aware of it. You oh, yeah, are yeah. hyper, hyper, hyper aware of it. Yeah. Um, have you ever have you ever been in those one of those pockets? Like where you, where just you drop? drop? Like Oh, That's yeah. Oh, you know, those are all those are awful. But I mean, your even when the plane your mouth, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but but when the plane even has to do it on its own, it it's still you have to you figure it out. Like seriously, when they just go down a thousand feet, a thousand mm -hmm. feet is, is quite a ways, and you have to do it in in a hurry. There's a wonderful video on my channel where they took the I think it was the flight aware thing and tipped it on its side. And you could see the planes get up to cruising altitude and they go tabletop flat and then go down. Right. And you're going, wait a minute. Why is the United States on this on this map? Why is it flat? Remember, the United States covers quite a bit of ground there. 3,000, right. 4,000 miles, right? And there's a lot of curve. And you're saying, well, that's just how they do it. I go, well, that wouldn't be the raw data. The raw data should be curved. So why did you flatten it out for flight aware? Why, why, why would you take the curve away? And unless the raw data was flat to begin with, right. but people are be like, no, that's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, okay. How many times are you going to be able to use that line? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, it's kind of switching gears here. Uh, being that you've been in a, a few documentaries now, mm -hmm. uh, I saw you're in a new one. Uh, there's a new one coming up. I saw like an advertisement for it or something like that. Origins untold. That's the one. I'm going to write that down. I'm definitely yeah. going to check. The premiere for that is going to be in a couple of weeks down in North Carolina. Uh, I'm not attending that one. Uh, and then they're going to try to sell it to whoever. And pff, believe it or not, under most circumstances, I don't think you could sell it because you know the, the of, of how media works but now especially since now the the screen actors guild just went on strike today uh in, <laughs> in addition to the writers right. there's going to be such a vacuum of entertainment in hollywood it wouldn't surprise me if it did sell wow. so yeah. yeah true yeah because once they, they you know they get they get uh very greedy because they start losing money so they'll start you know They'll buy, any, they'll buy anything, that yeah. things that normally would not make it. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Um, the Toronto Film Festival, which we did behind the curve at, there were 3,000 film submissions. Most people do not know. 90, 99% of the films that are made in the world, you'll never see because they just don't make the cut. Uh, yeah. So out of those 3,000 films that were sent to Toronto that year, uh, they only could only pick 100 of them. And out of those 100, maybe five get picked up by one of the distributors right and we happen to be one of them so yeah it's great awesome awesome i hope i hope to see that um 
another one too is how because we spoke about it earlier how do you feel about the misrepresentation that happened on netflix in the behind the curve documentary because clearly there was uh, deception there uh i why well, I, I knew once i saw it what the reaction was going to be i mean one i spent what seven months with those guys shooting off and on in different places but the what what they did was they spun it because of something that happened at the end of the shooting which was and i did not realize this until you you, you can there's actually a director's commentary on the itunes version and I didn't even know. And someone said, hey, there's a director's commentary. I go, really? I go, so I listened to it. It was, of course, boring as hell. But it got to the end where there was a kid who had asked me a question while I was on stage uh, mm -hmm. at the conference. And he was only 12. And I had to ask him. I was like, are you 12 years old? You know, applause and everyone was. And apparently that really offended the film team. Really offended them. To where that's when they had to. It was supposed to be just a human interest piece. But that's when they had to take digs at Flat Earth. But the movie was pretty much shot. Everything was already, you know, they, they couldn't go back and reshoot. They didn't have the money for it. Ready in production? Or so they, they, yeah, they had to do it in post with editing and and take take angles wherever they could. And so so in some ways, it, it I mean, the Flat Earth community did not help us, you know, our, our community. However, there were so many people that watched it because they thought it was a... Um, uh, uh, a hit piece against flat earth. Mm. Uh, so it was, so they felt safe. Even the title behind the curve, get it? Right. Because you know, they're kind of behind the curve, little, little disabled people that believe in flat earth. And, uh, so, but so there were lots of people that felt sad, but there was lots of people, you know, cause I, again, I sat in studio audiences that didn't even think it was a real movie for the first 30 minutes did not think it was real. They thought it was absolutely staged. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. Wow. These aren't these aren't actors. These are real people. And then they got engaged. And by the time the, the movie ended 99 minutes later, they were like, what is what did I just see? I have so many questions. So we generate a huge amount of interest with it. So they helped yeah. us in the end. We there was tons of people that got into it because of it. Right. Now did some people fare better than others? Yes. Uh, Patricia fared very well. They they treated her in a kind light, of course. Beautiful people always get the nice treatment. Um, Jaron, they took shots at because they were mad at him because he drug him up there twice for laser experiments that didn't go well. I mean, the first time he melted the freaking condenser, you know, and just melted it because he left it on too long. You're not supposed to leave lasers running for a long time. Um, mm. They they went after Bob. You know, they they had him wear a hot mic and Bob said things he probably shouldn't have. Oh, wow. uh, they took they took a few shots at me just because they could because I was the protagonist of the film. Uh, but I got I, I understood. So no, I mean it it did it. Would I have changed anything? No, I wouldn't have because the the way it played it it did about as well as it was going to that mm. year. I mean it it was it did not win any awards, but it was always in the top five of any film festival it was at. I mean, it played went for it went not only did it go the full three years on Netflix, it played everywhere. I mean, we did three shows in Moscow, for God's sakes. I mean, this thing, this thing had legs on it. And and to show you how much they hated us, no one even talked about a sequel. Sequel would have been so easy to do. Right. And and they never, never ever even considered it. They couldn't get away from us fast enough uh, and it's like all right so whatever i i have a, i do have a question what was one of your favorite documentaries you know from some that somebody else you know did uh oh uh probably hibbler's productions probably the in fact I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it was it's the the one that they just released which i didn't put on my thing yet darn it hang on one second it is called. I gotta add this to my short, my my short list. It is called On the Level, I believe. One second. Where the hell is this thing? Why is it a minute? Level with Me by Hibbler Productions. That's that's my current current favorite. Um, and it's on your it's on your your thing. Yeah, it's on my channel, but it's also on Hibbler's, and I will email that to you right awesome thank you now but it's 
But the reason I liked it... Yeah, it's called the uh, level of me. Kipler's done some, some, some great stuff. And the reason why I liked it was it spent a lot of time on the uh, the Challenger, you know, the space shuttle that blew up in 1986. Right. And it went over in great detail, and I'm so glad they, they focused on it, great detail about all the, you know, the seven astronauts, how six of them are walking around today in, in professional things doing, doing stuff. And right. that is because the Internet wasn't around in 1986, and no one could check up on these people. And, you know, we visited one of them in their driveway. Right. And, you know, there was snowing, and... I, it just killed me to watch this guy because he, that he, he's, you know, there's certain people that should not be interrogated because they're just not going to do well. And he was, he was one of them. The first thing you do, you know, this, if you're being accused of something, the first thing you do is you, you have your alibi in front of you. It's like, no, I'm not the astronaut. In 1986, I was doing blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay. That's, that's your opening line. He did never went there, never went there at one point. And in fact, he should have said, "If should have said, yeah, I remember, you know, that day in 1986 when the when that thing blew up." No, he said stupid stuff like, "Yeah, people have said I've looked like him my entire life." <laughs> right? It's like, and you look at this guy's picture, and it's like, really, you look like this guy, and people have been calling you on this your entire life? No, no, right. No. So, so no, I, I like uh, I like Hitler Productions. I think the that's one, by, by far one of my favorites. Right. Is there uh, any documentaries down the pipeline for you? Any new ones? Uh well, I mean the one that's coming out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean after this one, after the uh, Origins Untold. After Origins Untold, nah, I mean, there's been stuff. There's been stuff that that people have shot, and I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that that just doesn't get out there. Okay. Um. But that no, that's that's the big one that uh, Orange is Untold. Again, we'll we will see. They tend to have just fallen into it. You know, they they accidentally found funding, which just kills me. You know, most people can't can't get their movie funded to save their lives, and they got an anonymous donor who sent them a check. They didn't even open up the check. They thought it was um they thought it was like three thousand dollars, and they take it to the bank, and and the lady goes, "Oh, hey, you're gonna f fill out a form for this." He's going, "Why?" She goes. She goes, well, it's a thirty thousand dollar check, and they didn't even realize it. Then you know, it's like that—that that was it. It's like, oh, okay, we're gonna do our movie. It's like, all right, wow. So I, I hope it does well. I really, really do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. We'll we'll see. The odds are against them, of course. But then again, it's a weird year. So yeah. if, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking to fund my own experiments that I want to do, or or you know, observations. Should I? Should you say? Um. And I, I want it to be video, you know, a product, uh, a production, you know, worthy, if you will, and put together, packaged right, and put it on the YouTube, possibly even make it into a, a form of a documentary. I'm just tired of a lot of the arguments that I hear through Discord and online and, sure. and bickering back and forth. I just want to just go out, prove it myself, you know, see for myself. And I'll be honest, like if I... Um, find myself to be wrong in my observations and I, I will I will still you know get that out there like that you know but something tells me that that's not what's going to happen uh, only from what I've already seen already you know what I mean I just want to confirm what I've been told and seen and believe in does that make sense yeah yeah I mean it, but do you have a do you have a shot yeah lots of people have shots uh to to do things uh it really, honestly, man, it really depends. I mean, again, with, with, uh, with the um, untold origins thing or origins untold. God, it's a terrible title, by the way. <laughs> you know, I, even the title drives me nuts. It's like I, I'm sorry, no, no offense. I mean, I gave these guys all sorts of advice, and and they just they were doing the exact opposite, and yet this thing still got made. So you never know. I, I'm a big believer in what what's meant to be is what's meant to be. Right. So if you have the motivation and you know you want you want to gather, what, what do you what, what what do you got to lose? Uh, look at look at what I did with the clues. My my clues when I made those back in 2015 were just a cry for help more than anything. <laughs> you know, they were like, look, I'm really going out of my mind here. I'm a, consider myself a pretty clever problem solver. I can't solve this. Tell me where I went <laughs> wrong. And then people, here's where it gets weird, right? 
where most of the people don't, don't understand. And I put these links actually in the, the bottom of the clues playlist, which was people were calling me or emailing me saying, wow, I loved your movie. I go, well, it's only like a 10, 10 minute videos, but you know, it's, if you want to call it a movie, that's fine. Right. And then finally somebody said, oh yeah, your two hour thing you know, was, was absolutely fantastic. I'm going, I, I had to write back. I go, what were you watching exactly? I never made a two hour thing. And what had happened was people, because I made myself creative commons license, you know, people who just grab my stuff to this day, you can take my channel and take my stuff and put it anywhere you want. Um, they had mashed it up and edited it and put it, put it all in one big two hour block and put it on their channels. Never told me they didn't have to tell me because I made a creative commons license and they were getting millions of hits <laughs> for this. In wow. fact, it never even said flat earth was never in the title. One was called they're hiding God with the greatest lie ever. And then somebody else stole that and, and said, Oh, they're hiding God with the biggest lie ever. And then another one grabbed uh, the thing and said, Oh, uh, under the dome, full documentary which was kind of a ripoff of Stephen King's television series. And all of those were getting millions of hits. That's where I got the popularity from. It wasn't from my channel. It was from other people that were, that were putting the stuff out there just because I didn't, didn't even think about monetizing my channel. It just, right. just sheer dumb luck. That's yeah. all, you know, all it was. Um, with that being said, is there, uh, you know, I was talking to Dan, uh, the Waterman. You know him. Uh, he's met you. Yeah. He's I, I just saw him down in Los Angeles. That's what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he was saying though that that you have uh, um, that you were saying something about how you are looking still to get the full story out though. Because something about every time you get to stand up and speak, it's like you get sh cut short or cut out, or you know you, you're not able to truly get that fullness out. In these documentaries and whatnot, what is there truth to that, or what do you what do you think? Well, you think? it's it's not it's he makes it. Dan likes inserting, yeah, he he likes framing things a little more dramatically. I think, I think there are <laughs> the what I like to talk about when when people give me a chance. I, we don't necessarily have to talk about it here. Is uh, is that the flat Earth concept is just the the first part of it? Meaning, it's the lowest common denominator. Meaning, I'm a big believer in in the the whole Matrix 13th floor virtual world simulation type thing. And if we are living in um, uh, you know a big building, right? If it's enclosed, then it's probably digital, because there are things that we run into here on a regular basis that most people don't see or don't want to understand. Programmers see it, and some scientists see it, but they don't want to admit it. And the reason why I don't, it's not that I don't, that people don't let me talk about it. It's because it's never going to resonate with people. Most of the people, do you remember that the Matrix is 24 years old now? Most people didn't yeah. get it. It was like this, I mean, yeah. They, it was a full blown trilogy, and people said, oh, special effects and you know, all sorts of great action sequences. It's like, yeah, but you understand the concept behind it? Yeah. You know, the, 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 once a virtual world is established, you have to understand that you may not be living in some sort of, I, I hate to use the term base reality because I don't think there is such a thing, um, but you aren't living in an objective reality. Right. You are, you know, this, this place is probably a simulation because everything we do in media nowadays is trying to simulate things, especially uh, computer software like Minecraft or Warcraft or GTA or Fortnite or all that stuff. And mm -hmm. all those games are made in a perfectly flat world. Yeah, of course. There's little bumpy bits in the middle, but right. the edges line up, and we right. do that because programmers are lazy. We we <laughs> like to take the easier option, and the player's not going to notice anyway. And if the player's not going to notice, why spend the extra effort for something they're never going to see? And you're saying, what does that mean? I go, well, I'm not saying God's lazy. I'm saying God's efficient. God's a fantastic programmer, the best programmer there ever was. So that's that's usually what I what I try to get out there. What I try to delve into, you know, I try to get get into more of the the, the metaphysical, stringy theory, timey wimey type stuff, and uh, right. most of the time, again, the general public, uh, I mean, not your guys' audience. You you guys are great, but the general public, they're dumb as rocks, uh, and not not because they they want to be dumb as rocks. It's like, look, you went to school. I mean, the math club and the physics club, small groups, really yeah. really small. And they are, and and they're really dull and really tied to their wheelhouse. So, 
even those groups don't want to talk about it. Uh, you know, jump back to the flat Earth thing real fast. It's the same reason why, um, like the spacesuits don't make any sense. The Apollo spacesuits, especially. It's like how are they mm-hmm. walking around the moon, right? And and, right. and the nerds should be chiming in at that point and saying, <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. The spacesuit yeah, should not work. Right? <laughs> Should not right. should not work in the moon, but they're but they're not because they they are beholden to the institution that raised them. They are science fans, therefore they are not going to go outside the lines and criticize science. Science has treated them well. Science is the reason why they're doing what they're doing. So right. they don't they don't want to go against it. It's like, all right, giving them fine. a paycheck. Some of them. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, there's that too, and of course, if they're published, if you have a master's degree in a physical science or higher, you're done. You're cooked. Because you you've spent so much, especially if you're a PhD. If you have a PhD, um, but I've talked to masters guys, and they're almost the same, uh, because they're always thinking about their PhD anyway. Which is they've already spent so much time and money on their academic world, they don't want to break away from that. You know, they, they've got a really limited group of friends, of peers. I wouldn't even call them friends; they're peer groups, peer reviewed. Right. And uh, you do not want them. the scariest word for those guys is ostracized. <laughs> which right. is the formal way of saying get the hell out of here we don't, we don't want you hanging around us anymore right and uh, they don't they... yeah how do you so. how do you what's your opinion on how how to get flat earth into academia like you know uh at least the the consciousness of mainstream uh, you know to brute, main brute force guns uh hostages that that sort of thing <laughs> Extor- no- extortion <laughs> yeah take take taking prisoners um i don't know um it, it's tough because you don't need them though uh the the education of the world right now is being done through social media everybody knows that uh social media is again the the credibility it is the currency that's out there so if you look credible you are credible and so we just keep pumping up our numbers through these massive channels that are putting stuff out there and the more channels that say yeah it's not that nuts uh, the the better we do. I mean, I got into a discussion with a, a group from another country, and I and I remember them mentioning casually about PewDiePie, for example, and and they said, "Oh yeah, he's totally legit." And I, and I like look at him like, "What? Why?" <laughs> and, well, because he's got at that point he only had like thirty million subs, and it's like, "Oh, he's got so many subs." It's like because that's legit, right? That's that's it's like yeah power power you know the old saying power perceived is power achieved, right? Math right. social media has taken that to a whole nother level, which right. is uh, you know you you create enough of an illusion you know fake it till you make it, you are the illusion at least until it collapses or you quit or you don't have enough money to keep it going, and right. then you just disappear and nobody knows why. So, right. Uh. Yeah, you know, it, with. Uh... Another question too. Um, mm-hmm. Besides Netflix, uh, has media tried to twist or turn anything that you've you know put try to put out there or have put out there? Uh, not directly. There's not there's not much you can do to my clues or anything out there. You know, the, nobody's taken my my videos necessarily and turned them into an evil thing. Uh, mm-hmm. However, when it comes to interviews yes they will bend it you know but but usually that's done ahead of time they they'll they know what it's going to be like before they're even talking to me because again it's not the people that are that i'm interviewing with it's the producers the the on-air talent they rarely if ever write their own material uh right. the fact that the bigger the production um most of the time again it's just a face they're just it's ron burgundy they're just reading the teleprompter <laughs> re- right. seriously good, man, you, you know a lot of good movies I do. Well, I've I've watched a lot of a lot of media in my time, but Ron Burgundy was was way more realistic than people think. I mean, yeah, it was hilarious, but right. it is the on-air talent. That's what they do. They are paid to read lines They're and look in the camera and uh, and make them you know make make it sound believable. So they when move. I when, I mean when I was talking to some of these people, I could hear the producers in their ears. Sometimes literally, they're behind them. You know, whispering the questions to them, and you know, just just you know, quietly, so they they can edit it for the camera, and right. it's like, all right, so no, yeah, they they'll twist the interviews as best they can. Uh, sometimes I'll bait them with it, uh, you know, like when I when I was saying that uh, when I was doing an interview over in England, and I was saying that 
we're you know the flyers community is like the the clans of the scottish highlands you know we we will hack at each other all day long but at the end of the day we still just hate the english right <laughs> and they they ran that in a paper up in scotland <laughs> oh you must have got <laughs> That's flat earther flat earther says that it that scottish hate the english it's like um that's uh, not news guys but whatever that's fine right. <laughs> and I, but i did that deliberately just to say out of all the media and, and, and the press functions that you, you've been through and you've done uh yeah. any ones that uh you know if that were your favorite smaller podcasts are usually my favorite because they're informal and you can run longer the thing is when you do bigger stuff you are condensed down to less than 15 minutes and right you and and it's 15 minutes where you've got someone coming at you i mean right. i've done I've, I've done radio segments at less than four minutes which is ridiculous uh wow. we have to talk really really fast um yeah. But no, as far as hosts go, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I've done some in-person podcasts, which have been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just as long as it's casual and people are open-minded, I don't, I don't mind talking about it. Um, but no, there's no nobody that sticks out to be. Uh, so, I mean, the 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 my favorite interviews ever. You know, again, those were just ones that you know we the the hosts were willing to go back and forth. I put at the beginning in one of my audio books. I think I can't remember my name. But uh, I don't, for the most part, I, I don't I don't hate anyone. I mean, the the one where I got thrown off of London London TV um, a few days ago that was one of the rare times I got thrown off. But why did you get thrown off? Um, because the the guy that was uh, James uh, James Whale, his last name's actually Whale. That probably a stage name, I would think. Um, but there again, may not be. Uh, he was. He won. He's dying. <laughs> he 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 was a big pro shot guy, and then all of a sudden his cancer came back with a vengeance just recently. Oh wow! And uh, the treatment's not working, so he's he has very little patience for anything, and he's an atheist. So between those two, we were not going to do well, and I knew this right. going in. So <laughs> it, we you know, about four minutes early, he he just I think he was just trying to you know flex his it's like this is my show i can do what i want rah, rah, rah. so right. whatever that's fine I, and i wasn't offended in any way shape or form he's like look it's not very often i get interviewed by a pretty much a dead man i mean right. I, I i'm hoping that it won't happen really really soon but i imagine in a few months from now i'm probably getting an email from somebody over there saying oh yeah by the way james passed it's like shocking <laughs> unexpected baffling right right um yeah. What, do you have any? Uh, what would you say to a a person that believes in the globe but's on the fence? What, what would you What do you say? What would you say to them? Like if you met them or whatever? Or what? Oh do you yeah, say? don't. Oh, I can tell you what I say. It happens to me all the time. Uh, don't look at it. <laughs> and that's not reverse psychology. I, I try to warn people. I say, look, if you wake up and you like your life the way it is, everything is awesome as the song goes, and you think you got a good bead on things to steal from men in black then you re and i put this as the as the uh, the intro from my, my last book I, I said you don't want to do this because if you do if you tread carefully because if you do there is a point of no return very much like the red the, like the matrix you know red pill blue pill yeah. which is once you take it once that once you get to a certain point you cannot go back because again, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to put the idea in your head. You tear down the globe by yourself. And once you tear it down, how can you put it back together again? Can't. That's why we have a higher retention rate than all major religions. You know, it's, it's how we, we got as far as we did. Because anyone that goes into the flat earth world cannot come back out of it. They can't. Where, where are you going to go? How are you going to do it? The only thing you can do, the best you could even hope for, <coughs> is you could try to ignore it, and and hope it doesn't drive you nuts subconsciously. Right, kind of like uh, it's kind of like when you uh, when you see the wizard curtain, right? Yeah, like the get the the up, right? Yeah, or I mean, it's it's it is. I, and again, I'm not ripping it off, but it is the Morpheus warning, which is he gave Neo every chance to walk away, every chance. 
And, you know, it's like all I'm offering you is the truth. That's it. Right. And you can you can choose to leave right now if you want. Of course, he wasn't going to. And Morphe was right. hoping that he wouldn't. But that's how that's all. The thing. By the way, the, the, the whole Matrix thing was a game. If people didn't, you know, if people missed the, the, the subtext there where he had already been through it multiple times. Right. And, right. You know, and you look at in the fourth one, right? The what? He's the creator of the. Well, yeah, d- right. don't even. Yeah, that you can throw that movie out. That movie. <laughs> That movie was just an afterthought by the producers that is like, come on, guys. You're, <laughs> what are you doing? You're just wrecking the canon. And no one, no one paid yeah. attention to it. And I think, you know, until you brought it up just now, I hadn't even thought about it since I watched it that night. <laughs> just to get just to get through that thing. But but right. yeah. anything else? Uh, yeah. How about advice for uh, for uh, the people that have, you know, been in that the trenches of flat earth defending flat earth like any uh, you know for years like what do you what do you tell them the veterans the people that have you know been doing it to, i don't i don't really have to, i don't really have to tell them much um we it's n- never was never gonna die i i knew that and the the big reason why it's never gonna die isn't for what you might think it's because every the the, the speed of which social media is changing platforms, right? I mean, how how old does MySpace look, for example, from, from so long ago? Right. Um, every time a new platform comes out, whether it's BitChute or Brideon or Rumble or Instagram or whatever is out there, there's so much content to draw off of and people, people immediately start grabbing. Flat Earth infects everything that it touches. So you don't even have to do much. You know, the, the content's already out there, a lot of it. I mean, you can expand on it. So like when TikTok started rolling out, kids started grabbing flat earth videos, snipping them all up, putting them on TikTok. And then there were other people that grabbed the TikTok compilations and put them back on YouTube. And then it just became cyclical. And it happens with everything that comes out. We, if it's possible, the, you know, we're, we have memes everywhere. And the, the new generations coming in, they're, you know, even again, even though we're only doing this eight years, they're grabbing it. Every time I do a convention, every time I do a meetup, there's always new people. Always. And uh, so for the people that have been around, uh, I mean, the, the family's never left. They know this. Uh, yeah, again, we've, we've lost a few people, but but not because they renounced Flat Earth, just because they died. Uh, but everything else just keeps going strong. Jaron keeps doing his thing. And by the way, if if this thing what didn't have legs, if this thing really truly was some sort of slap, why does everyone keep doing it? Right? I mean, David Weiss didn't have to put so much money into that freaking app, you know, to make it. That's a high end app, by the way. That is extremely complex for for what it is. Uh, why is Jaron still doing it? You know, why didn't Patricia make a, a statement and say she renounced it? Uh, in fact, the only people that renounce it at all, and there have been so few of them, are celebrities where their agents get a hold of them and they say, uh, yeah, you got to back off of this for endorsement reasons. Right? And, you know, like Shaquille O'Neal, he was with us for 10 days. And then he had to go on the Jimmy Kimmel show and had to had to renounce it, sort of. Uh, or, um, you know, that the girl from Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown, she was with us for years. And then all of a sudden, you know, shortly before she got married, one other thing, it's like, oh, that was just something I was, I was into. I didn't really believe in it. It's like, really? Because I got the video. You seem pretty sincere to me. So, anyway, so no veterans. No, everyone's doing. Everyone's doing great. I mean, the conference is living proof of it. I'm gonna be there. Karen's putting on the show. Rick Hummer's gonna do the MC. David Weiss will be the audience and. All the other people who are doing productions, we got people flying in from the UK. It's like the for us the the whole pandemic never happened. Uh oh. What happened? Can't hear you anymore. Crap. Is he gone? Hey are we done? Hey. No, yeah. What happened? Can you hear me? Yeah, my, I can. Uh, my other phone died, and then I immediately switched to my other phone. Uh, and then, but they had to bring me back in, though. 
It's like a, oh, you know. Okay. So How, I, mean, do you, I heard everything you, wanna, you said. Oh, okay. Did you want to start winding this down? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. I, um, uh, that was actually the, the last question that I had, um, you know, because we went through okay. a lot of them. Uh, but I did want to go through a couple of that were in the Q&A from those that are in Discord, if okay. you don't mind. Sure. Uh, maybe like another 15, 20 minutes worth. Uh, I'm going to go through them here. Let me let me open it up. Okay. It's almost like perfect timing that that died and you know, caused a, a disruption. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me see here. So uh, there's, wow, there's quite a lot here. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll skim through them. Uh, first one here. Um, let me see here. Uh, from NASA Shill. That's a great name. What yeah. evidence do you have for the flat earth? Not we see too far water or evidence against the globe, but evidence showing the earth to be flat. Wow. <laughs> if I had undisputed evidence that the earth was flat, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It'd be a completely different uh, world. Uh, but I'll, th I'll throw them one that's, Again, here's a question you can't answer. Forget about long distance photography. Forget about the eclipse shadow. Forget about the Van Allen radiation belts. Just do something simple, like like gravity versus vacuum of space. Tell me what happens uh, where our atmosphere ends and space begins. Tell me exactly what happens, because no scientist has ever been able to do that, ever. Uh, the, it goes against the one of the laws of thermodynamics, which says that pressure cannot exist uh, next to non-pressure without a barrier. So what happens there? And if you're saying, well, that doesn't prove a flat Earth, I go, well, at the very least, it means that we're in some sort of pressurized system. Because if there has to be a barrier, then has to be some sort of structure around it. And come on, doesn't the whole term greenhouse gases only make sense if it's an actual greenhouse? So there you go. Have him respond if he, if he can. And if he says, I'm that's sure he not will. proof, it's like, that's fine. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Stay, stay with your globe as long as you can. Anyway, go ahead. All right. Next question from uh, Run Boston Bear says, Mark, in your opinion, isn't the desperation of the Globers getting to an asinine level? Just watching them debate frees the minds of the indoctrinated daily. Yes. Yeah, the 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 globe. We the, the thing is, we use a shotgun pattern approach when we go after you know the the globe arguments, and we have. And also, do not forget the biggest the biggest reason why the globe arguments fail is because everyone in the flyers community used to be globers, right? No right. one started talking flat right. Earth was the greatest thing ever. I mean, I was an anti flat Earth guy for nine months, hammering this thing out. Not to mention all my years prior to that. Right. So, no, I mean, we, we all we're, we're good at what we do because we were on the other side and now we're, we're arguing. It's like, look, we know all your arguments because we had all the arguments and we've been refining them now for eight years. So <laughs> as far as the other desperation, yeah. You want to watch desperation? Tell me about Artemis. Tell me about the Artemis <laughs> program. All right. Tell me how that's going. Tell me how Artemis 2 blew up you know, they lost control what barely 60 seconds off the pad and blew up at four minutes and uh tell me tell me how that's gonna work at moving forward how, how we're gonna how we're gonna send people around the moon please right right they swear they swear though uh next question yeah. um uh let me see here did I, I i just had it oh here it is uh when was your last debate i have no idea it's tough. It's tough for me to find debates, to be honest. Um, most of the time, I, I don't get invited to debates. Uh, I won't invade. I, I won't debate straight up trolls, troll channels. So uh, anyone, anyone. I, I don't know. It's been a few years. I don't even remember when the last one was, to be honest. Most of the time, if I'm on a panel, I mean, the I did some earlier debates back in the day. But lately, it's tough to find, you know, yes, of course, I was invited by Simon Dan and Professor Dave and, and those guys. But no, I'm not I'm not going to entertain dedicated flat earth troll channels that all they're doing. The only reason they exist is for clickbait, uh, you know, it's uh, just just harvesting ni YouTube nickels from us. <laughs> all right. Uh, from one. Oh, big by the way, by the way, oh. the, the Professor Dave thing. 
Yeah, I'm never ever going anywhere near that guy after what he did with uh, David Weiss. No, that was horrible to watch. Yeah, no, you know that. what? Did you ever watch? Uh, I think it's called Mind Shock. When he does oh yeah the- yeah 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 I've seen I've I've watched a number of Mind Shock videos. Yeah, that guy does a great job. Um, but did you see yeah. the one where he counted how many fallacies uh, Professor Dave had compared to David Weiss? It was like wow, wow. Yeah, it, it was it was it was difficult. I wasn't even watching the video. I was listening to the audio. It was difficult just to listen to, because if you know anything about debate, uh, he he, just, just, he went he went for the absolute f- um, worst tactic you could ever do, which is like, oh, we're just going to start name calling right off the bat and never stop. And it's like what? Right. It's like right. you, you can you couldn't get away with this in any sort of formal debate. And then the moderators, you know, the British guys just let that let it fly. It's like all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what else? Uh, from uh, one big pawn, he said, "Do you feel manifestation is true? And if so, what is coming for you in the future?" Uh, hopefully, some sort of hundredth monkey effect, which I have talked about going all the way back to 2015. Which What's is that? hundredth monkey effect. Science, of course, denies it because they came up with it. Like, I, I love it when science discovers something and then they immediately backpedal from it. It's like, oh, it's probably not the case. It's, it, we're just going <laughs> to cancel the study. It's like, what are you talking about? You did this. Um, where there was um, some monkeys on on these Japanese islands and they they drop some potatoes off and on the beach. And the monkeys were eating the potatoes, and some of the monkeys started figuring out if you washed the potatoes, you know, you didn't have to eat sand, which was which was a better deal. And then the well, other monkeys were picking up on this, and once it hit like the hundredth monkey, give or take, all the rest of the monkeys knew simultaneously, including monkeys on the other islands that weren't even, you know, they couldn't even reach. It's like, okay, so we went to another island. It's like six miles away. There's no way these other monkeys could have swam there. They all are, they're automatically um, washing the potatoes. It's like, oh yeah, it's, it was an update. Hmm. Somewhere along the line in the building of this place, there's automatic beneficial updates. Somewhere where it says, oh yeah, if so many monkeys decide that it, it you know, the washing potatoes is a good thing, let's just make all the monkeys do it so they don't have to, don't have to piecemeal it. I think the same thing applies for a lot of species. Why not people? So if, but you want to talk manifesting things, uh, if enough people, I don't know what the th- threshold number is. And I, I have no freaking idea. You know, is it, is it 50 million? Is it a hundred million? What is, what is it? When it hits a certain point, maybe we reach that tipping point where it's easier to talk about flat earth than, than to dismiss it. And if that's the case, you know, I, I would think that once that happens, then something big comes, comes along meaning the the caretakers of this place step in like, like anything going all the way back to the tower of babel which is a such a fantastic short story from the bible which was that that was one of the shortest civilizations ever because they immediately they were unified and then they were like oh yeah we know exactly where we are let's build a freaking ladder now <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna see if we reach this thing and god's like uh no nah, we're not gonna let that happen right and, and and he messes up the civilization so could that happen with us yeah i think so you know if right. enough people figure out what this world is then it changes things so that's that's what i'd like to manifest right that's me. I, anyway I, you can look I, up the, you can look up the hundred monkey thing in wiki if you want right me me personally i'm i'm under the the strong belief that in the scriptures it says that man will We'll never know the heights, depths of the widths, and the day that man does, they will be taken out of Israel. So, last time I checked, there's still still people in Israel, and I just I just believe that we will never know the true uh, heights, uh, depths, or lengths. So that's that's where I'm at, you know, about all of it. I'm one of those definitely not a ball believer, you know. So I hear you. Uh, from flat Earth math. Uh, Charles says, please tell Mark Sargent that he is literally the inspiration behind my channel. He was talking on Strange World five years ago, mm-hmm. how he asked some physicist dude how he could prove to Mark that the Earth was a globe. And the guy replied, I'd have to send you to space in a rocket. I thought there's got to be an easier way. And after yeah. a bit of thinking, Flat Earth Math was born. 
Thank you, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I remember that interview. That was again. That was one of the, the few debates. That was a tag team debate. Uh, David Weiss was with me, and on the other side we had two physicists. One of them was supposed to be Richard Hoagland, by the way. Uh, you know, really? who was a big believer in the secret space program, and he bailed because the secret space program has nothing to do with flat Earth. It's one of the few conspiracies that cannot work in a flat Earth, and. Meaning, you know, that there's millions of people on the moon. And uh, yeah, that particular physicist, he was honest and open about this, even though the guy had, had, was, had just gotten out of prison for um, embezzling eBay, <laughs> of all things. I remember this guy. Uh, he, he said, because I, I asked him, is there any test you can do on the ground to prove the globe? And he goes, no, I'd have to send you to space. Wow. And I was like, wow, at least you're honest about it. You know, <laughs> very, very few scientists would actually admit that. So, wow! There you, there you go. So anyway, you're welcome. Yeah, flat flat Earth math, Charles. Flat Earth math, Charles. Uh, Demon Stride. He's uh one of the the uh, server, another server uh, that we're networked with. He's the owner. He asked if he would want to do something like this, same style, over in his server. If you want to pick a day and a time. Sure. Yeah, sure. he's, he's you, a local just, guy. He's just real email guy. me if anybody wants me to to come on and talk about stuff. Just email me. And uh, I will set something up just like this one. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Demon Stride, I'll, 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 you know, if you don't have it, I'll send it to you. Uh, he also said, does he play Diablo 2? Which you said you do, right? Oh, <laughs> I, I, lost, I lost entire summers playing Diablo 2 when it came out. <laughs> I was one of those guys that we hunted down retail stores, you know, because you couldn't download anything back then. Um, we hunted, this is back in 2000. Uh, hunted retail retail stores for whoever got the copy first. We were calling around, driving around, right. and so it's. I know I don't want to digress, but when <laughs> Diablo two, um, um, uh, oh my God, what's it called? Uh, hang on, it's called. One second, it's called Diablo two. Oh, resurrected. When Diablo two resurrected uh, came out, it was glorious. You know, you know, updated, updated graphics, updated uh, PC requirements, absolutely wonderful. So yeah, D two. Oh, I lost summers, summer <laughs> playing that. That's a good thing. Uh, NASA Shill again said, "Ask him, is there any conspiracy that is too wild for you to believe?" Um, no. I mean, there's the obvious ones, you know, is, is Elvis still alive? Um, did, did Elvis have Bigfoot's baby stuff? You know, weird, weird, you know, I, I, but I can't shoot down anything. So it's like, do I think the Royal family has of England has lizard people in it? Maybe. I mean, I, but again, I've got, I mean, some conspiracies I like, some I don't. I have an opinion on all of them, but nothing so freaking wild that I just throw it out entirely. Because Flat Earth is the the the, the ugly stepchild, or at least it was for a long time when it comes to the conspiracy right. world. So, no, no, every, everything else, you know, I'll I'll listen to it. I've probably heard it. Um, uh, do, like here, I'll throw throw out one real fast. Um, I, I don't want to drag this out. Um, this is our and, like the adrenochrome thing. Am I a fan of it? Eh. I th I think it's I think it's false advertising for for what you're getting out of it because you know look look Alistair Crowley died, and people have been trying to look for immortality for a very very long time. If there are immortals walking around this world, here's the catch: they can't be public about it, not without trying to change their their um their features. I don't know how you do it. So right. anyway, hey. <laughs> one but yeah nothing too crazy all right uh how about uh, so for ro ro i think it's rog rogue i don't know rog maybe ask yeah. mark are there any pieces of evidence on the flat earth side that no round earther has tackled or even attempted to debunk huh has even attempted to debunk i mean they don't like going after gravity versus the vacuum of space and all that um, they don't like going after the black swan argument with the, the Santa Barbara oil rigs, uh, because it's just, there's, there's all sorts of it. They try, okay. They've tried to address just about everything, but that most of the time, most of the time they will try to solve it with 
one of two answers either just general math they'll they'll throw out trig and it's like oh that's great because remember the math club super small i don't know who you're talking to uh or they'll use gravity you know and again i love i love it when i because i've talked to physicists when they when they say oh you know when they throw in gravity and and i say <clears throat> you realize that there isn't a scientist in the world that will tell you you know they all say the same thing it's like oh yeah we we don't know what gravity is we can only tell you what it does we can only tell you the symptoms of gravity because we can't reproduce it artificially so whenever somebody runs a story, you know, oh, look, gravitational waves detected. It's like, really? Where are they now? <laughs> oh, no. no. Yeah. And they, they try, no, they, they've, they've tried, of course they've tried to address, but some they're way less vocal about. Again, gravity versus the vacuum of space. Tell, tell me how that works. Have, have you ever heard about uh, the magnetic field um, half-life? ordeal or like there's something wrong there like it's not adding up have you ever heard about that you mean like like how the magnetic north moves that sort of no, thing no. So, so so apparently they, they have come to this conclusion mathematically that the magnetic field has a half-life so like and i guess it's mathematically down to like every 1400 years it's it's a half-life so yeah. if you rewind it, you know, go back 1,400 years, it's doubled. 40, another 1,400, it's doubled, it's doubled, it's doubled, it's doubled. That mathematically, if you go back like 25,000 years, that, that the force of magnetism would be so strong that it would melt the earth that they believe it to be. Huh. So, so then it's kind of like backwards construction, but... So then to say that the earth is 4 billion years old, well, yeah. that would be mathematically impossible in the magnetic, um, you know, half-life, sure. you know, <clears throat> paradigm. I could see that. Sure. And science, by the way, it steps on its toes all the time because it's so broad. They don't know. You know <laughs> the, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's talking about or writing about or researching a right. lot of the time, a surprising amount of the time. Right. Which is why, by the way, the... um. Uh, the dark matter thing comes up so much because at least that's something they they they're all buying in on it's like oh yeah dark dark matter once we solve that then we'll have the answer to everything it's like okay right. yeah good luck with this one <laughs> sounds like uh we're going to mars type of stories um yeah. uh another question can you explain the south celestial pole uh, sure. Everything on the sky is just part of the skybox system, meaning the the sky is literally just a projection. It is no different than what we build into every one of our simulations. It is just an ornamental clock system that predates language. So, and what by that I mean, look, I'm coming from the the programming world, the the video game world. It, we instance everything now. We can instance based off of region. We can instance based off of individuals. We can instance based off of anything. So, and I don't even have to use the South Celestial Pole. I mean, why didn't you bring up the, the equator where you can show time lapse of the stars going in two different directions at the equator simultaneously? And it's like, yeah, that's what would happen. And that's what we would program in if you were going to build in the sky. Because remember, it's going to, what you're, where you are. It's not just a building. It's not just a flat, flat, flat world. It is a simulated universe. To try, I mean, the whole the whole idea is to keep you thinking. <clears throat> excuse me, that there is space, that there is you know this this massive cosmos. So South Celestial Pole, stars, sure, we can do whatever you want in the sky. Right. The the only thing that's trickier, I mean, good lord, if you're gonna ask that question, go for go for the hard one. Go over the one that no flat earther can answer, which is how do you do get a 24-hour sun in Antarctica? Either either it doesn't happen, either the 24-hour doesn't happen, or there's multiple light sources. Because remember, it's easy to do at the, the North Pole, but the South Southern Ring, tough to do with one light source. Can't. Can't do it unless there's something else going on. Right. So by the way, on that note, real quick, uh the you know, show me I love the fact that there's 6 billion smartphones in the world and no one has any 
um, video, because we have videos of everything, right? No one has a video of a meteor striking anything, actually going from sky to ground or water. Remember, it's three quarters water. Think a fishing boat would see a meteor come in and hit the water, even if it was the size of like a, like a basketball. Think you'd see it coming. No one has it. Get some streaks across the sky, some flashes. Right. Oh, maybe maybe there's a crater there. And was anyone there at the crater? Nope. Six billion smartphones. It's kind of odd, don't you think? <laughs> you know, also, I like the one where, why haven't we seen shooting stars coming up from our horizon into the sky? Because if there's a curve, then they would see it shooting straight across. But we should right. shoot shooting up. I like that one, too. Or, or, or planes looking like they're going to crash when they go off into the distance. Right. Yep. Right, right, right. Oh, come on, man. D David Weiss and the sun videos have, have blown that out of the water. Completely. I mean, the fact that the sun is just, when it gets to a certain point, optically, it's brilliant. Where it gets off to a certain point, and the thickness of the atmosphere just makes it go away. And you think it's set. Right. Dissolves. <laughs> yeah, it just dissolves. It's like, pff, wow. All Again, right. why, why? And that's brilliant. That is... There are layers and layers of illusion to this place, which are so subtle. And again, we we don't know what we're seeing. I mean, how many people? So, sorry, let me go off on a tangent real quick. No, um, that's right. How many and people have told me that they have seen the curve from the airplane? How many people have told me they've seen the curve from the airplane? And I go, and I put this challenge out immediately. I go, fine, take a picture of that, uh, hold a straight edge up, up to it, and then uh, email it to me. I'll quit tomorrow. Or the fact that Neil Tyson. You know, made that famous video a couple of years ago where he said that he goes, uh, he goes, no one can see the the curvature even from 130,000 feet. Most famous scientist in the world currently, and he's saying this. And I've I've called people on. I go, so is Neil wrong? Yeah, because he said you cannot see the curvature from an airplane. He absolutely said it straight up. He was not hesitating, and people just go silent. They just don't. Well, they don't know what to do. And, ballers and, dismissed him like that just like yeah. that they dropped him like he's nobody and, but, uh, and he's but but at the same time no one has emailed me a shot from an airplane where the curvature was there and i'm not trying to be mean when i say this it's not that they didn't see the curve it's that they wanted to see the curve there's a difference it is, it is the orwellian five lights four lights thing we are told of the curves there we're told it over and over and over and over and over and so when you're in a plane you look out the window, it's like, oh, yeah, there's the curve. Really? Are you sure you see it? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Really? Just take a picture of it. Seriously, I'll quit flat earth. Just send me a picture from an airplane where the curve is there. Why has no one sent me this shot? Right. No, I, I'm not lying. I'm looking. I check my email every single day. No one's, no one's done it. And <laughs> come on, it, it's wrecked at this point because all the pilots I've talked to they keep telling me the same thing. It's like, yeah, there's no curve, man. <laughs> it's like, oh no, oh no, I'm not going on record. <laughs> There's just no curve. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anything just else before? Because I, I got to get out of here. All right. Yeah. You know, uh, let me let me try to uh, uh, wrap this up then here. Uh, we have been going uh, two and a half hours, kind of long. Um, they started filling it with non questions. So hold on. Uh, let me try to find one for you. Uh, All right. Okay, so you got them all riled up over there. I just want oh, to say before imagine. before you go, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time, Mark, and uh, yeah, very gracious yeah. of you for no, for no, coming. Happy, really happy appreciate to do it. it. And I don't, I don't mind. I mean, yes, it happens. You know, it's like you put a bee's nest in a mailbox, start hitting it with a bat, and and people get all get all worked up. It's like, look again for the let me let me try to wind this down with this. If you like the globe and you hate the flat Earth, fine. Fine. Don't look at flat Earth. Don't look at it, and it's not reverse psychology, so you'll be fine. Just, just <laughs> hang on. You can, you can put some NASA stuff up on your wall and get some T-shirts, and it'll be, it'll be really, really cool. Right. But just know that the the group that we have out there, and I'm not trying to be um, inflammatory when I say this, we're gonna win by attrition because the the science world out there has to come up with an easier way to explain the universe than what we've come up with. And right. until they do, pe people go for the easier option, always, always, always. And uh, you say, yeah. well, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. It's like, eh, not, not exactly. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, it's easy. I mean, come on, um, texting. I, I've never sent a text in my life. It drives me insane, right? But texting right. is emotionally easier 
which is why everybody does it. Right. Is that me? <laughs> I'm not doing it. I am old, kids. <laughs> that voice right. in chat. That voice what? in chat. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. No, I'm not, I'm not using that either. Much easier. I, I know. I will call people. And by the way, I love the fact my, you know, my phone number, my, my phone's been on this entire time. My phone number is posted on every video that I make. 1,500 right. videos for eight years. This phone barely rings. There it is, right there. <laughs> It's not ringing now. It has not ringed through this entire interview. Wow. Nobody right. makes phone calls anymore, Mark. There you go. That's hey, well, <laughs> That's I, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. And uh, hey, you. we're, we're just, uh, we're, we're grateful for um, uh, people that have that've kind of like, you know, kind of, I guess, started this whole thing uh, in one way or another. Uh, because it's nice in, in a day of, of where people are, searching for truth and there's people that you know are going out and finding it and spreading it i guess you know at, at their best of their capacity uh but hey uh thank you again for coming to the uh, asylum and uh we'll shoot you the video or, or the audio i mean hammer right you got it recorded yeah yeah send me send me the audio when you get a chance and uh, rip rip it if you can i mean i'll rip it on this side if you can't but it'll be much smaller to send if you rip it on your side and uh, think about think about vegas if, uh, if if anyone's has any doubts or anything, you don't even have to go to the conference. Uh, there's going to be half of the conference just sits in the lobby and just talks all the time. It just never, ever ends. So Vegas is going to be great. October 21st and 22nd, uh, flatearthfestivals.com. Awesome. Sounds yeah, like um, fun. Yeah. All right. So that's your closing words. I was going to, I had my last question was any closing words. Are there, are that's, those it. that's it. Go to flatterfestivals.com. And don't, I'm not going to give you any links or anything for me. If you want to find me, uh, just go into any search engine, type in flat earth mark, follow the rabbit holes. You'll get there. Awesome. And we'll send you some links for us, the asylum. Maybe you could put it on your YouTube sure. description when you post it. Appreciate sure. it, Mark. You have a good night. All right. And until next time. Hey, you're on the West Coast. So am I. Maybe one day. Thanks we'll, again, we'll, brother. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. Maybe we'll do some visual audio, you know, I mean, uh, visual uh, experiments. Groovy. <laughs> All, right, All right. Have a good one. All right. See you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.